What up, y'all? Hello, everybody. All right, y'all. We are doing Big Fat Quiz. This was the Channel 4 anniversary one in the spirit of doing all of them in chronological order here. This was the next one. Anniversary one. After this was after Big Fat Quiz of 2006, and and before okay. Big Fat Quiz of 2007. So is this a interesting? This is our first one of these we've had on the channel then. I think so. Yeah, uh, I don't know what to expect from it. I don't know who's on it, but I think I think we'll keep going after we saw the uh, 06 one with Noel cool. Fielding and Russell Brand. That was the best, hands Hunter. down. That was funniest shit. I, I loved not knowing anything of that year, but just watching the, the comedy unfold amongst the panelists, that's the draw to this whole thing. That was gold right there, man. Yep. That was gold. Anyway, you ready? Yep, let's do it. All right, three, two, one. A video exclusive from The Killers at 5 past 12. First, a celebration of Four's 25 years. The Big Fat Anniversary Quiz contains some strong language and humor of an adult nature. He's really good at this brain training. Very clever. That's my boy. That's what you think. Oh, shit. Oh, man. So this is fitting to be a very good TV-themed one here. Yes. I noticed almost all of those people at the end. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anyone else up until the end or just cycled through all the legends. I just saw I you know, Friends and Father Ted and South Park were on there. So it's you know, bound to be a good one. I like the animations because they give me a gist of what was happening then. Yes. Yeah. Out of all of the ones we've checked out, this is the one I'm the most unfamiliar with. Those pictures that you saw. Yeah. I guess obviously, but no yeah. idea. Yeah. I uh, will see. And welcome to the Big Fat Anniversary Quiz. Tonight, we're looking back at 25 years of Channel 4 and celebrating some of the most groundbreaking TV of the last quarter century. Channel 4 has always been the thinking man's BBC. If the man in question was thinking, I wish there were more gays and tits on the BBC. <laughs> Yes, if BBC One was your auntie and ITV was your embarrassing uncle, then Channel 4 was your foul-mouthed art student cousin who'd show you her knickers for a fag. <laughs> if you want to play along at home, all you need is a piece of paper and a pen and six celebrities. <laughs> We've got ours. Let's meet them. Team One from opposite ends of the bipolar spectrum, it's Alan Carr and Jack D. Oh, God, this is going to okay. be a great team right here. Just the okay. polar opposites here. 100%. Ugh. I really don't know who Jack D is, but I know who Alan Carr is. So, so, I know him, and he's the polar opposite of Alan Carr, then I guess by proxy, I know Jack D. Yeah, I am mean, on Shooting Stars, you know, Vic Reeves. Uh, he was one that Bob and Vic were trying to cheer up. Yep. And, you know, he's always very negative N Nelly. Okay. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Team two, we've got the slender sex bot who proves you can be middle-aged and still sexy. It's Frank Skinner. <laughs> With him, the woman every man would love to take into Dictionary Corner and give a consonant, vowel, consonant, consonant. <laughs> kiss, kiss, Harold Vorderman. That's a good one. And finally, two crazy party Ooh. animals who make Amy Winehouse and Pete Doherty look like lightweights. From the IT crowd, it's Richard Awadi, and from everything else, it's David Mitchell. <laughs> Makes them look like like white lightweights. And, and here's the two biggest <laughs> nerds in Britain right here. They're they're like if don't get a perfect score, I don't even know what's happening. But it's it's, it's plated. Oh, true. So. Okay, so, maybe not. Then and these two are on two very successful TV shows, The IT Crowd and Peep Show, along with this, everything else David Mitchell's done. This is an interesting pairing. Like, okay. Oh my god, it's gonna be nuts. <laughs> oh okay. my god. Now I'm presuming you've come up with some pub quiz team names. Alan, Jack, anything? Well, we thought of uh Cardies. You get it? Cardies? Yes. I quite Car like the Cardies. D. Cardies, the Cardies. <laughs> and then uh I t well, I said that to you earlier, and you sort of looked at me as if that was rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> so I then said to you, well, what would you have said? And you immediately said, carjack. <laughs> Which is better. better but you look lovely together. You look three drinks away from a civil partnership. <laughs> 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 He'll be as the show goes on, Alan, don't you worry. <laughs> Carol and Frank, what have you got as a team name? Um, we thought um, A.D. Because it turns out, not only on the same team, we live yeah. in the same flats. We live in the same block of flats, you see. 
Is this a sitcom that you're planning? <laughs> no, 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 it's actually this happening in real life. This is the truth. Yes. Yeah. It might and be the first he's time got, that's ever happened. He's got a pervy telescope in his flat, and he can spy on everyone through his pervy... Have you not no, got a pervy telescope? No, I have a telescope. It's pervy. <laughs> which I use for... You know, to, no, well, I can see your flat, but I, I can honestly say I've never <laughs> looked through Carol's window with my telescope ever. No, because he's got the pervy internet. <laughs> I'll tell you what you look like. You look like someone, I hope you don't mind me saying this, Frank, but you look like someone that's gone on wife swap and hit the jackpot. <laughs> that is what it looks like. This guy's even got the tooth right there that's yeah. messed up to fit, fit that role. Yep. Wife swap hit the jackpot. There you go. But just it looks like you going, I'm never going back. <laughs> well maybe I can say at this point something I've long thought that you look like someone who's just taken their spectacles off. <laughs> <laughs> you know when spectacles I don't mean this unkindly, Jimmy, but when spectacles wear us their spectacles off and their eyes look like they're not used to being out there on the surface. <laughs> if only he was wrong, I'd come back. <laughs> Thanks very much. Richard David, what team name do you have? We didn't think this through yeah. properly. No. Because we we thought if we were in the middle uh, of the three teams, we could call ourselves Team Three in a way that would be annoying. And therefore, <laughs> in some way at that point, we thought good. But now we're on one end. We could so be one, but that three. would just. But it may be we are actually so we're, officially one or three. We're 50% irritating. Yeah. <laughs> you still be saying thinking about it live if you're in yeah. the <laughs> <clears throat> so you appreciate why we're in scripted stuff generally. Yeah. So, you know, in this just, section. Yeah, we joined up fully in the expectation that words would start to scroll yeah. in front of our eyes. <laughs> and, you know, the fault. I think you should be the it boys because you're in the IT crowd and yeah. you were it throughout your school career, I imagine. <laughs> why don't we call ourselves the specky nerdy fucknuts? Ladies and gentlemen, the specky nerdy fucknuts. <laughs> right, let's get on with the quiz. Channel 4 is proud of broadcasting many water cooler moments, but what exactly is a water cooler moment? Well, it's a moment on TV that prompts discussion the next day. For example, tomorrow morning, two girls might meet at the water cooler and one might say to the other, did you see that Jimmy Carr on TV last night? He's dreamy. And the other one would say, I think you might be dehydrated. Have some water from the water cooler. <laughs> Here's a reminder of some of Channel 4's most talked about shows. The countdown starts now. The Big Breakfast here on Channel 4 Live at 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm Chris. And I'm Gabby. Oh, let's go a long way to go for you, catch up, man. Where are you going? You cocked up. Well, I'm just getting his telephone number, that's all. What do you do, swallow it? Next week, in my office, officially, you'll have to do your job. I knew it was going to be tough, and I thought I was going to be much better than this. You know what? I think this is a episode of... The big fat quiz that's going to be like, you got to watch, watch this show, this one. Uh, kindly fell for that right now. Oh, and my vote God. vote for it in Patreon. 100%. We... Mm-hmm. That's where your voice is heard. 100%. Yeah. Patreon. We sat with love, by the way. Yeah. We didn't say that with any mal Well, well they know that. They've been rocking with us for three fucking years. Exactly. If you don't know we're joking by now, then yes. you must be new around here. Then or you have off. no sense of humor. Then... So fuck off. Yeah. No. All oh. right. Oh, man. Would you like me? To be the cat. No firing squad. No torture or retribution. No bloodshed. A very British crew, wouldn't you say? He's a straight geezer from the suburbs. I know. It's amazing, isn't it? And if you toss that fucking cabbage once more, I'm going to ram up your ass, okay? Oh, oh. Right. Eyes down, let's get on with the quiz. Question number one. Have a look at this clip of Ollie Reed's legendary appearance on After Dark. Yeah. So, therefore, to get away from it, I've got to. I'm a shut away, big tits. <laughs> all I've got to do. You finally had. All I've got to do. Yeah. What he's got a is the problem with me. Than... Right. Yes. If we were going to yes, talk well... each other out, we've got to. We've got half an hour to talk about that. Uh, if no, that's got to get involved with sexuality yeah. or where our tits lie, that's okay. I don't want to be a chicken ass. <laughs> it can move from one to another by the mechanism of projective identification in which it gets in from one person to another no, and, and, and this is a very important... What the hell is that? Okay, so me, guys in the comments, please, I know this guy, I know this man from very old, old movies, like Aware. I need to know what, what movies he's been in. Because I feel like I've seen his face much younger in like a color movie. Like, you know, it was like the shit. It yeah, just happened. Yeah. I feel like I've seen him somewhere. Um, yeah. Yeah. It reminded me of the uh, mastermind um, uh, part to Ronnie's there. You remember? 
Yes. Like, can't do the accent. No. But... <laughs> it was mind blowing. But yes, yes, yes. I like that. That uh, the yeah. setting was. Yeah. I... What the fuck you just said there? No, I don't know either. <laughs> uh, it, it was probably alcohol induced, though. So what? that says everything you need to know. A smile at the end, is it, with the gin? Uh, okay, apart from you to address her as big tits, <laughs> what did Ollie go on to do to feminist writer Kate Millett, which forced the host to ask him to leave? Did Grabbed her tits. So, what did Ollie read yeah, to know. Kate Millett? He went away, he came back and he kissed her. It was a great moment, kissed though, her. wasn't it? He's amazing. Yeah. I think it's going to be one of the truly rare clips of him sober. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. For our next question, it's over to the gorgeous Anna Friel. Hello, Jimmy. Um, so you may remember back in the days of Brookside, I did something very, very naughty. Yes, I murdered my father and buried him under the patio. But the question is, can you tell me what was his name? Is it me or is it her saying I killed my father? Very, very naughty. A little bit sexy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. She's a but she didn't sound like that in Brookside, did she? In Brookie? In Brookside, she was a lesbian, but I'm reliably informed she is now back on solids. <laughs> <laughs> God. Okay, next one. Which notorious wife swap contestant got in trouble for benefit fraud? Oh. 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 Them for upgrading. So was wife swap a bigger deal over there than it was over here? Because they tried that for like two years. Yeah, yeah. It was on Chappelle's show. It was parodied. Um, that's all I know about wife swap. Yeah. Yeah. No. She's the one Frank's got waiting at home. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I will write down. Oh. Okay, right. Lot of Raunchy period drama, the chamomile lawn, caused a stir back in 1992. Here's a little taster for you. Can we stop on the cliff before we get to the house? Of course. Will this do? The terror run. Should we do it this year? Polly says it's maybe our last holiday. That was before they decided that actors in general should face the camera. Right? <laughs> okay, what I want to know is can you remember or guess what rather explicit but politely worded request our hero made next? Well, hopefully he didn't say, will you toss me off? I said, on the edge of a cliff, it could have all gone horribly wrong. <laughs> You're not far off. If I've learned anything about British slang, is it, will you slob my knob? Yes, I believe that's the uh, pronunciation. Yeah, I'm learning here, learning all the things I need to know. Uh, uh, very polite, yeah. but quite explicit. I think they probably do it. OK, back in 2000, Channel 4 changed the face of reality TV with Big Brother. Can you remember who was the first housemate ever to be evicted? So I guess Big Brother, like, was a bigger deal in the UK because I know it's a big deal now in the US. I don't even know if it's still on or not, but it had its yeah. time in the sun on CBS. It's, I think. it's, still, it's still massive over here. It's just called it is? CIA. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Make sure ah. that's, they're the ones watching now. Ah. <laughs> It's cool. It's their reality show. But yeah, yeah. no, it's big for a little bit. Isn't that where Flavor Flav got his... Wasn't that Big Brother? I think it was, yeah. And in fact, we think we touched on that on a recent episode of Big Fat Quiz. It might not have been Flavor Flav. Big Brother was like 2000s. Right? Viver came out. Right, right. And they said literally 2000 is when Big Brother started in the UK. Oh, man. But okay, okay. Yeah. Well, I thought who won it, who was that? Not first, yeah. Oh, awesome. sorry, love. <laughs> like we're at the bingo now. <laughs> sorry, love, be with you in a minute. Where's the live link up? <laughs> I love that. The live link up's good. Link up to yeah. Preston, sorry. <laughs> then there's a meat raffle, everyone's happy. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> okay, I, I got one question. Alan Carr, Jimmy Carr, are they related? Since Cousins, uh, Weird Tree. Let us know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. a chance of two cars on, on TV. But at the same time, are they related to NASCAR? That is also on TV. But more importantly, are there their real names? <laughs> Let us know. Here's Jonathan Ross with a bonus question for you. Uh -huh. Hi, Jimmy. Can I just start by saying how incredibly sexy you look this evening? Uh, I'd like you to take a look at this clip of me on my first television show, The Last Resort, which began on Channel 4 back in 1987. My guest here is the amazing Orshante, and I want your panel to try and work out what he did next. What is, uh, you got a particular like, a kind of string you like best, or any old string will do? Oh, that's a bit. But that's really hitting the spot, isn't it, Orshante? Yeah? What? Down there? <laughs> That was good. Amazing, amazing. Pulled it out of his butt. Or his eyes. Uh, yeah. I'm just saying butt because I I will see the world burn. 
Yeah, that's, that's fine. I, I got that's you. Just still in Spandau Ballet when they make it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was young. Unlike you, Carol, he's decided to sort of space time continuum and get older <laughs> as he gets older, <laughs> rather than you sort of turning it. But I imagine there's a portrait somewhere looking dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't spotted it with the telescope. <laughs> <laughs> Should we jump straight on to the answers for round one? I asked what a drunken Ollie Reed did next. What have you all got? You've got... He kissed her, tried to kiss her. Should we have a look? Let's have a look. The, the majority of people want the death penalty. They, they, they haver about <laughs> it. Um, <laughs> and I don't believe in the death penalty. Oh. Ooh. Yikes! That's just... You know what? You, you know what he reminds you of? What, what's my dude that just dresses in all glitter and just is bigger than life? That's like one of those moves. He's like, I'm yeah. bigger than this moment. I'm just going to go ahead and kiss someone. Yeah. He f flops into his seat. He's like, fuck it. Ugh. Like, times different back then, man. I said grabbed her butt, but that's pretty much the, the same thing. I should get a point for that. I, I would. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're all absolutely right. He did try and kiss her, although I would have accepted trying to cure her. <laughs> She looks like a castaway. I can't. I keep thinking she should have gone to Specsavers. I don't know why. <laughs> She's had a rough ride with Channel Four, really. That woman, hasn't she? Because a few years ago, this drunk old bastard tried to kiss her, and now she might be dead, and we're just slagging her off, <laughs> saying she's ugly. Even though, I mean, would she have to be to stop drunk Oliver Reed trying to get off? <laughs> That's the question. Okay. Um, asked you to name the character she killed in Brookside. What have you all got? Well, I reasoned that Jones is a very common surname <laughs> and Fred is quite a common first name. And so not knowing... It was a stab in the dark, was, Jimmy. Yeah. A stab in the dark is actually what killed him, uh, ironically. <laughs> it's, it's not Fred Jones. Uh, Mr Jordash, you've gone for, I'll give you that. And you've gone for Dad, Trevor... I didn't so know you were going to do it line by line. The ch is on the um, line three. Jordash. Jordash. <laughs> Trevor. Of course you knew that. Yeah, it's true, isn't it? <laughs> It's not very well you laughing at us, Jimmy. We're trying to do a quiz here. Thank you. I think you'll find when we get to the next exhilarating answer that at the end of our answer three, there is a shh existing there. The pen, yeah. the pen doesn't go anywhere near the screen. Let's see if I'm right or not. Yeah. Right? <laughs> see, we're not cheating. Don't yeah. accuse Alan and don't accuse me. Yeah, do you know Jimmy, you've been carjacked. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Have a look. Yes, that's right. Trevor Jordash. Why didn't she say, no, not Fred Jones? <laughs> Other two, you're right, Trevor. Do, is she listening at all? <laughs> OK. Which what contestant got nailed for benefit fraud? What have you got? Well, we've got the rest of the answer to the previous question. <laughs> <laughs> what we've got. So you went for... Lizzie Bardsley. Lizzie Bardsley, absolutely right. Yeah. You went with Lizzie Bardsley, Lizzie absolutely Bardsley. right. You went with uh, Jocasta de Villeneuve. <laughs> <laughs> We reasoned that uh, De Villeneuve is a very, very surname. <laughs> Castor, very, very common first name. <laughs> Don't let these glasses fool you. I'm Eyes very you. stupid. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, should we have a look at uh, Lizzie Bardsley in action? Mark, you're brilliant. You do everything in the house. Correction. No, he doesn't. Don't sit there flattening your eyelids at my husband, you fucking tart. Right? <laughs> you read so far up your own backside. Oh, we can speak. OK. Here, give my husband permission to smear oh, you, oh. new snooty fucking oh, mate. Good God. <laughs> she does look like a Jocasta. She does. You're right, yeah. I think. Why was she dressed as a Victorian? <laughs> I don't know. OK, next one. What was the polite but explicit request made in the chamomile lawn? What have you got? OK, can't fuck, not, not <laughs> far off with that, boys. Yeah. I'm sorry, I should have put a question mark, I realise. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, it sounds like some exhortation to... Just a fuck carefully. <laughs> to look after <laughs> <laughs> uh, You've gone for what there? Uh, this was Carol's idea. <laughs> yeah, it's, obviously. Um, envelop my helmet. Is that how you say it? You don't have an E on envelop. That's envelope. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> my helmet, then. <laughs> that isn't the right answer. Uh, Alan Jack, what have you scribbled? And I'm saying scribble now Listen, because. I'm because not going to sound like Mrs. Slocum, but my pussy went on the next line. <laughs> <laughs> I could murder some pussy, but I didn't know. That he was gonna, I thought you'd show the whole lot, so my pussy is down there. <laughs> Sorry, your pussy is where? <laughs> my pussy's on line five. <laughs> which sounds like a <laughs> babe cast. <laughs> my pussy's on line five. <laughs> Just putting you through. <laughs> Let's have a look and see what the right answer is. Polly says it's maybe our last holiday. May I fuck you now? <laughs> no, I won't. Hey! David and Richard got it. Hey! I would say they were the closest. Yeah. Closest.
I got the closest. <laughs> oh man. I, I just sound cultured there, but I failed. Oh well. Yep. Nah, fuck you now. Now, at once. I'm, g I'm gonna give I you a point for really care for a fuck. That's pretty close, I think, in terms in of polite idiom. expletives. Is it an expression you've ever. I think. Uh, no, no, an expression I've ever used in anger. Although not all sexual experiences have to be filled with anger. Just all in my experience. Thanks <laughs> for sharing. Okay. Do you masturbate very angrily? Furiously, yeah. Right. This team really seemed to be bonding. <laughs> right, let's kick on with this. Um, who the first housemate ever evicted from Big Brother? Okay, you've got more Sarda Pussy. <laughs> no, Sarda Sar Sar Pussy's from the other question. Sarda, well, that's actually the, the right answer is Sarda Walkington. Uh, what do you want for Nasty Nick? We went for Nasty Nick because we couldn't think of anybody else, could we? It was a shot in the dark. We tried our best. You went for... Patty de Villeneuve. <laughs> <laughs> who? As the first uh, person from the Big Brother house back in 2000, Hattie de Villeneuve. <laughs> yep. Jocasta's mother? I think we weren't 100% sure that Jocasta de Villeneuve was right. So we, we could safely go for another member of the Villeneuve family at this point without necessarily massively reducing our chances of winning the game. We didn't know the answer. Silly name. <laughs> Quite so honest. OK. Jonathan, you what the amazing or Shante did next. What have you all put? Oh. He, um... We took an answer for that. We were talking about it. We were going, oh, my God, that looks painful. And then we're just having a chat, and then... <laughs> One thing led to another. Yeah. Uh, Carol, Frank, what have you gone with? He, um, he, put, he eats the string, and then he pulls it out of his navel. He remembers navel. this. You're oh, absolutely right. sure he doesn't... Sick up a wicker basket. Are you sure you don't remember him sticking up a wicker basket? <laughs> Don't offer that option to them now. It's like it's a clear that we've got the right answer, and you're just going to let him string run with... away. <laughs> right, let's have a look and see what the great Oshante did next. Oh god! This is so. Oh no! No! I'm not watching that. I'm not watching that. Oh! How do you know that's not Tagliatelle or something? <laughs> it's actually a tapeworm. <laughs> <laughs> I think well, Carol, in fact, you can have a point for that. OK, let's have a look at the scores after round one. OK, Alan and Jack have four points. Carol and Frank have four points. Richard and David are lucky to have two points. <laughs> so join us after the break. We will be talking about American shows on Channel 4. Programmes like Sex in the City, which wouldn't have been as good if we'd made them here. The city would have been Dundee and the sex would have been dogging. See you after the break. Welcome back to the Big Fat Anniversary Quiz. Channel 4 executives literally scour the globe for great TV. From the west coast of America all the way to the east coast of America. <laughs> Sadly, that means we missed out on Afghanistan's top sitcom till death do us fulfil our glorious dreams of martyrdom. <laughs> but who cares? We all love American telly. There was Friends, you know, the, about the group of funny, lovable, attractive people who hang around with David Schwimmer. <laughs> the Cosby Show was an innovative and different comedy in that it didn't contain any jokes and nothing funny ever happened. Actually, that one aged quite well. Yeah. 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 Spot on. Yeah, 100%. Well done. Good Passed. job, Jimmy Carr. Yeah. <laughs> sex and City was an incredible achievement, a programme entirely about sex that was almost impossible to masturbate to. No sex act was off limits in Sex and the City, oral, anal. I saw one episode where someone fucked a horse. Turned out it was Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> OK, here are questions about American TV on Channel 4. Right, I've got a picture clue for you first. Here's a sample one. Have a look at this. Wow. Obviously, that is Jimmy Carr. Couldn't oh. be easy. So then you're going to have to work one of these out. OK. Oh, okay yeah, Can you yeah. decipher these pictures to find a memorable quote from an American show? Oh, OK, hold Lord. on. Pause OK. It. God Pete damn it. Or Jonathan or uh, Kit Kat? Oh, I can't. Oh, man. Like, who's that lady? I don't know. And it's Jonathan Ross. So P. Ross. A, isn't Ross one of the guys in Friends? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're on a break! That's what it is. If it this... is, that's awesome. If it is, yeah. dude, this is mark this down in your calendars, Spence. We we at embrace the suck team. We have got a point on one of these fuck a do picture things. I'm there for it. Yes. Because I, I I said, all right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got it, I Wadi. I'm expecting great things from you. Why? Because of your <laughs> high level education. <laughs> and, and... Oh, we come on. I've, I've... Continue to disappoint you. <laughs> That's one. Okay. Your next question comes courtesy of Quentin Tarantino. Hi, Jimmy. What? 
All you avid Channel 4 fans will remember that in 1995, I guest directed an episode of ER called Motherhood. But can the teams tell me why a 1997 episode called Ambush was in particularly nerve-wracking for the cast and the crew? Was someone else controlling? I have no idea because maybe they weren't released at the same time. So... Can't answer it. No idea. I'm going to say Kill Bill. Uh, I'll say uh, Pulp Fiction. There you go. I think his eyes. <laughs> it's a the lines the on the disc going now. <laughs> so stressful for the cast and crew of ER that night. I was just about to say that. Well, let's be see wrong, that. We'll, which means we'll both be wrong. Did you ever watch ER? I love ER, but it, it's so fast and the, the the energy of it is incredible. But a word of warning. Never watch ER and follow it with a, an episode of Casualty because you can't <laughs> cope with that amount of slowdown. It's, <laughs> it's taking crack and then an aspirin. <laughs> so disappointing. I think ER is incredibly... because it's about a hospital. It's about a place where we will, most of us, die. If we're lucky, we'll die there rather than in a fireball. <laughs> see it until that's happening to me really i don't want to see it for fun in a story about other people who are dying in a way that one day i might <laughs> can i say the use in be a joke in birmingham yeah. <laughs> you've done very well out of it frank yeah. i know <laughs> i've reworked it in every form <laughs> and it used to be why has the queen got so many children because she got er on knickers right <laughs> and in birmingham that means er if you're thinking in birmingham that's for you I think it's interesting that in Birmingham people think that the way sex happens is you strip someone down to their knickers and then read the instructions. <laughs> no, it's just different. ER. Yeah, but what's the queen be in her pants anyway? Yeah. <laughs> at that point, it's probably wouldn't... clear well, that she's at that point. She would be somewhere in Birmingham yeah. with her pants fully exposed. <laughs> the fact that there's instructions on the pants at that stage is not the main thing that's going to tip whoever it is who was going to have a go over the edge. <laughs> Surely they would have started by saying, why is the Queen in this bar in just her pants? Oh, no, let's not do anything. Let's wait to see if there's a message. <laughs> right. It could be. In she the could field. Be, she could be in a hotel in Birmingham. There could well, be an how would they have got in? An intruder. <laughs> what, an intru intruder who then will read the instructions on the pants, Frank? <laughs> reading the instructions, it's reading them out loud and working out what they phonetically mean. <laughs> also, in Birmingham, presumably as everywhere else, ER is on every post box and every policeman's <laughs> This is a city where policemen are being repeatedly fucked in the skull <laughs> by well-meaning strangers. <laughs> because in it's certain fact... bars on Fridays... Surely... It's no, it's not. It's Apparently only... they just save it for the Queen. <laughs> OK, next I want to know... Oh, my God. Any Brummies in the audience watching, please defend yourself from that one. We know it's uh, JPS won't do it, so no. <laughs> you got to do it now. Yeah, that's for damn sure. Uh, oh, God. Do I just need to put two uh, Johnnies on there? There you go. Oh, Love what that. What did we just watch? I have no idea, but it was a mad impressive dialogue. Yeah, yeah. Be one of the greatest moments of this whole Big Fat Quiz. Uh, yep. Journey that we that had. Was, uh, what the fuck are we talking about right now? Talk about yeah. like a like okay, sidetrack, just doing our own shit. That was a journey. That was a quest. You could write a book on that sidetrack that they just took. And that was insane. We try to like <laughs> track in the same realm. They went way off the deep end. <laughs> and and starting point was ER. What? Uh, okay. Yep. Yeah. God. <laughs> All right. So stupid. Can you name the four friends in Sex and the City? Carol? Uh, oh, Ca fun. Carrie, uh, I know it's Carrie Bradshaw, um, because they're Jessica Parker. Uh, are they, are they asking their act or their, their characters' names? names? No idea. I know it's Carrie Bradshaw, and the uh, which I will go on record now as saying that's I have one girly drink that I like, and that's the Cosmopolitan. I love I, that. I do know that one, two, three, the third was the rookie in Police Academy. Oh, so, okay. I've yes. seen that one. I yeah. know it. It our Patreon people will pick that in the movie yeah. Hollywood Hollywood movie soon. <laughs> it, was, it was not a Hollywood blockbuster either. That's like what it's called, fucking classics. It was just anyway. Anyway, it's a city. No idea.
Alan, we're expecting great things. Oh, I know. <laughs> Do you want surnames and star signs? Yeah. <laughs> OK, character yeah. names I'm looking for. What character names. Yes. I'll give you a clue. Horsey, slaggy, dikey, prim. Uh. Next. A little photo question. I've slightly enhanced this picture. Can you identify the classic Channel 4 show? Cheers? It yeah. has to be Cheers. Cheers. That's the lady. That's the chick. That's the yeah. comedian with the frizzy hair. I don't know how to say it. I know exactly who that is. Yeah. It's not Kirstie Alley, is it? No, 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 no. It's like that raspy voice, like the kind of short lady. I don't know. Like She had the frizzy. It, she looked like, like a bus driver. I don't know how else to say it. She looked like one of my bus drivers when I grew up. So, so you think she looks like me? No, no, no. I wait like that. No, I don't. No, no. See it once she puts a face to it. You okay. know exactly who this is. All right, all right. Do you look rather <laughs> lovely in that? Thank you, Carol. You really do. I've made an effort there. I know, I can tell. I've just kind of slightly dropped a hip as well, which is a good look for That's me. That's a great look. <laughs> Alan thinks it's scrap heap challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I would, it's I said, not no, scrappy challenge. That's hurtful towards Jimmy. It's a personal slight. Sorry. It is. <laughs> okay. And finally, it's over to Ricky Gervais, who, of course, made his debut on Channel 4 and has since worked as an extra and in an office. So I wish it had worked out for him. On The Sopranos, the greatest TV show of all time, dementia suffering Uncle Junior confuses himself and his friend Bobby with the stars of which other Channel 4 show? I say Channel 4 show, they don't make any shows, they just buy them in. Where's the skill in that? <laughs> You've got the money. Brilliant, well done. Which show? I never watched that. Do you have anything? You know what's funny? I never watched that either. Oh, okay. There's a lot of stuff I was just too busy for. Sopranos and regular sitcom stuff, I wasn't there for. Got it. Yeah, you said that. You were more of a movie guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which show did it? I don't know what's the Sopranos. Oh, it's going to be another American show. It, oh, Sopranos is brilliant. Have you all got something there? OK, uh, that how you did in round two. Uh, what memorable quote did you find in the picture? OK, what have you got, Alan and Jack? Well, this is quite simple. We are old biscuits. <laughs> From where? It was a pilot. It didn't go very far. No. Is that right? We are old biscuits? No, no, it isn't. Oh. Frank and Carol, what you went with? Can I just say that we've got bottles of things down here, but no glasses, and I think it's very cheapskate, frankly, on Canton. We always have glasses. Oh. <laughs> Carol, you're on a detox. What are you doing? <laughs> Is that a Red Bull or Michelob? Oh, no. And I'm trying to cover up the label. That looks worse. Oh, Carol, <laughs> get a room. <laughs> Sorry about that. What was the question? OK, what was your... We were okay. on a break. OK, Richard and David, you seem to have got this right. Go on, moment of glory. Uh, is it on a break from off of Friends? Friends, they said. Yeah, well, on a break. You're close enough, I we think, to get something break. there. We were on a break, was we the correct? We were, oh, right. From Friends. Do you remember they were on a break? Yeah, we were. OK. Uh, got it right. Right. We got one of those picture things right. Yes, Mark you it did. down. You did okay. this fat quiz, quiz of history right here. Mark it down. Yep. You, what was unusual about that episode of ER? Your answers? Live, it was live, live. Okay, I wouldn't tell you know for the answer. Did anyone get it? <laughs> because that episode was filmed and broadcast live. Uh, okay, so yeah. Yep. Okay, what names of the friends in Sex in the City? Yep. What, what have you got, Richard and David? Carrie, Miranda, Samantha, and Gwen. <laughs> We Gwen. <laughs> Gwen was a definite guess. So Carrie, close. we're pretty confident on sliding scale in between. Yeah. Okay, Carol and Frank, you four. Carrie, Samantha. Well, Frank went for this because I could only remember two of them: Charlotte and Miranda. Get there you me. go. I think that's it. Okay. Okay. He said, "Don't tell me what they are. I know what they are." Like well done, you. Uh, yeah. Alan, Jack. Uh, Carrie Bradshaw's on the next line. But it is there, you will see. With uh, question you, you know what, Alan? I'm going to take well. your word for that. I Thank think you, you probably got this one. Yeah, the answer, Charlotte, Carrie, Miranda, Samantha, which coincidentally is the order in which I would do them. <laughs> OK, next one. Asked who was I being in this photo? What Dave. show was that? What'd you get? Cheers. Well done. Cheers. What, did you go for Carol and Frank? Uh, we went for Cheers, obviously. It was a lovely and Richard pose. and David. We went for Cheers or How Clean Is Your House? <laughs> All right, uh, let's have a little look. Uh, I see it's it. like Edwina Corey. You all get a point for cheers. Next one, okay. I see it. She could totally be a bus driver. Right? Like, not in any derogatory... Like, I... I bus driver. In, in like, school, she'd smoke. 
while I was on the bus. Like that's the driver I had before Man. people gave a shit. Yeah, before P political correctness. <laughs> yeah, you just to like sit down. But yeah, no, ah. sit down. Shut up. Only eighteen. Like what? <laughs> Christ. Hey, uh, Ricky Gervais asked you to name the show that confused <laughs> The Sopranos, Uncle Junior. What did you think it was? What did we say? Ah, now you see, we didn't have time to write it down. <laughs> NYPD Blues. We thought. Okay, incorrect. Oh. Okay. Can I Curb your enthusiasm. Okay, and Richard Davis. Curb your enthusiasm. Okay, let's go back, Ricky, for the answer. The answer is curb your enthusiasm. Okay. You right? Won a competition. I don't know why he's old enough. I'm mic'd up. I was. I'm mic'd up. Just wanted to. But you wish you had a shave now, don't you? <laughs> don't be embarrassed. Jimmy started off like this, and it wasn't a mic he was holding. <laughs> you're absolutely right. It was curb your enthusiasm. Yeah, I see it. Have you watched Curb Your Enthusiasm? No. If anybody hasn't watched it, it's basically Seinfeld on steroids. Like. Anything that go wrong will go wrong. That basically, oh, that's the I've, whole premise I've of it. I've never seen it. Like, dude, I got you said more time watching film. Right, right. I, 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 I didn't watch Seinfeld when it came out because when it came out, I wasn't born yet. But uh, with um, doing gigs, coming home late at night, just flipping on the TV to decompress, reruns of Seinfeld would be on late at night, and that's how I that I got into it. Before uh, it was on Netflix, the the just to be known right now and within our people, the only TV show I have binge watched are Parks and Rec and Reacher. Those are okay. the only two I've binged. Oh, by the way, and How I Met Your Mother. Oh, I didn't okay. watch that. Yeah. Reacher, I don't know anything. Know anything about Parks and Rec? I definitely know about How I Met Your Mother. I just liked it. Barney, Barney is the only whole reason I, I dove into that. Suit up. Legend. Let's have a look at the scores. Alan and Jack have eight points. Carol and Frank have eight points. Richard and David catching up with six points. Oh. Richard, you are our youngest panelist. You were how old when Channel 4 started? Five. Do you remember anything about it? I, I didn't mind it. I thought it was fine. <laughs> it, was, it was all right. Approved it. I thought, go. Go ahead. <laughs> To be honest, I wasn't massively consulted on the whole process. I was kind of left out of a lot of key decisions in setting up the channel. And, uh, <laughs> I think we can see the fruits now. It's uh, working out for the channel or for me as a man. <laughs> right now, it's time for a bonus round all about talk shows. Sometimes a talk show will run and run like Parkies. Sometimes the audience will run and run like Davina's. <laughs> Questions for you. Can you tell me which two Channel 4 chat show hosts were described by the Bee Gees as Tosser and scum, respectively. I'm getting the hang in this. I don't know. You all got something? Yeah. Got something. Right you got something. All right. Well, what have you got? Well, Clive Anderson called them tossers, I think. And they walk, one of them walked off, didn't he? They all walked off. No, they off. called him a tosser. No, no, he They're... called them a tosser. They, they were in a band rude, called either. something like the tosser. And he said, well, you've been tossers ever since, and they all walked yeah. off. So I presume that they would, they bounced that back at him. The, right back at you, said the Bee Gees. And, and Scum, mm. we just guess Terry Christian. Well, you all got Clive Anderson. Yeah, Clive Anderson. He's terrified of losing that hand, isn't he? <laughs> Is that Clive Anderson? That's Who's Line, right there. He was the original host of Who's Line, all of the UK version, and then uh, it got cancelled when Greg yeah. Proops got deported from the UK, so they had to film yeah. in Los Angeles. He did one season, and then Drew Carey took over for on ABC yeah. and cancelled. At least Tyler, and now it's been going strong ever since. The other one gripped tight on that bastard. He's okay. hiding the fact that at the time he had an ill-advised Egyptian beard. <laughs> <laughs> you, you thought Clive Anderson was a tosser, and who do you think was scum? Uh, no, we thought, because he can be sort of a very... He can be a tough interviewer, I imagine. We guess. But I imagine he'd take the Bee Gees to pieces. <laughs> it's not John, John Snow. It's not Terry Christian. Alan and Jack. Graham Norton. You're absolutely right. Uh... You get the points there. Well done. <laughs> yes, the Bee Gees called Clive Anderson a tosser and Graham Norton scum. Next question. <laughs> Why? Both Graham hmm. Norton and Clive Anderson are, have made quality television in our eyes. Does that clip exist somewhere? Yeah. If it is, please let us know. And we'd oh love my God. to see it. Oh, my God, yes. Freaking Bee Gees? <laughs> Yeah, knew the New York Times effect on man, and they still stand alive after that. Yep. 
Ring My right. Bell, hosted by Laurie Pike, briefly but oh so brightly lit up our screens in 1991, providing yet another twist on the talk show format. What was the twist of Ring My Bell? Can I... Oh, can I... write it down? What is Can it? you write it down? Yes, yeah, same as all the other questions this far. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's changed, Vorderman. She's whispering in Frank's ear. <laughs> I'll be getting changed in the front room tonight. Oh, that new rug, so, so warm. OK, what do you think was unusual about Ring My Bell? What have you got, David and Richard? Uh, it's the first and only campanology-based <laughs> What? Literally some bell ringers from a church. Finding out what they were in, doing. Interviewing, maybe. I mean, these didn't get on with them either. <laughs> they um, called them bellends and... <laughs> They just, you know, mm. on who cares? <laughs> I'm, you know. But point taken. Thank uh, you. Carol and Frank, what have you gone with? I sort of remember it, and I might be right. Was he like a shock jock in a radio studio? And people used to ring on the phone, and then he'd talk to them on the phone. So his talk show, his guests were on the phone. Not quite. Um, what, Alan I, what I meant to say was. There were celebrities, weren't there, in booths? She spoke to celebrities, so that's the new, tw new twist on a chat show. And listen, listen. Let him speak. Hear me out, <laughs> all right. Right. What right. I meant was that members of the public could phone celebrities. That is the right answer. You get a point. So do you, Frank and Carol. You're pretty close with that. You don't get a point for that. Mm. Let's have a little look from one of my favourite moments from Ring My Bell. A buttock and one right boob. Hey, did you turn that right boob? I didn't see yes, that one. Yes, just, just, you've got to look very quickly. You oh, blink God, and I didn't see it. Was that in the one with, with the um, toothpaste? Oh, that was camping. Oh, yeah. that one. Oh, well, well, I, I, I tell you You're what, about it's, the only it's, it's just as long as my girlfriend has. didn't see that one. I thought she would have had even more of a go at me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you take care. Oh, you bet I will oh, I do. Love. God bless you, Love darling. to see you, too. Bye, love. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. <laughs> love to see you, too. Bye. Was that Leslie Grantham had phoned up? <laughs> OK, after that, we'll be talking about Channel 4's contribution to youth TV. Shows like TFI Friday, which was called TFI to avoid saying unpleasant words no one wants to hear at tea time. Like, it's the Seven show. <laughs> so the break. OK. All right, we're getting a hang of this. So, so, real quick. So, timing. Dude still isn't dead, is he? When did he Who? die? Who? Yeah. He'll fit. That guy's not dead yet. Oh, Jimmy Savile. Uh, not dead yet. He died 2011. 2011. The year I graduated high school. Seven. Uh, okay, okay. I'm pretty sure he'll probably make the rounds in this one. Yeah. Kid shows. He's, yeah. He said, oh, you see! If you mm. know. To the big fat anniversary quiz. Before Channel 4 came along, the only television made specifically for teenagers was the Clearasil ad. <laughs> And once a month, John Noakes interviewed Dave Lee Travis about discos. Channel 4's youth shows were fronted by talented and beautiful young women like Danny Bear, Amanda de Cadenet, and Janet Street Porter, to name but two. <laughs> then there was Max Headroom, an odd robotic performer with a square head, plastic-looking face, and a side parting, which I think is a good look. <laughs> Channel 4 also makes dramas for young people. Hollyoaks is not only entertaining, but also educational. Before Hollyoaks, I didn't even know how to rape a man. Oh. <laughs> if you do a Hollyoaks joke, you should have someone in the corner doing that for it. Why? Because when you watch Hollyoaks on the omnibus, there's always someone in the corner doing... What did the CE man do when the man was arse raped What did the CE man do? <laughs> but that, you know, that's only if it came in dialogue. You know, there's pictures. You're going to mention it if you're arse raped didn't you? Well, <laughs> maybe he just tutted to himself and went... Not again. <laughs> boys. Boys be boys. What's he like? <laughs> okay, straight up questions about. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right. Oh my god. All right, we're out here now. It's British humor. We've been doing this for three plus years now. We should yeah, be used know. to this by now. Oh my god, bro. Okay. <sighs> but it never. We, I can just never get used to it. Nope. Nope. Uh... <laughs> If you're familiar with the annual Big Fat Quiz of the Year, you'll be delighted to know that the children of Mitchell Brook Primary School in Neesden have put on one of their unconventional school plays. What I want you to tell me is what notorious Channel 4 show are they depicting here? Welcome to the show for grown-ups what loves lots of disgusting things. And some music. Hello, I am very, very posh. Hello, I look a bit bad and talk American. Stop! How down! Here's a person to make fun of. I'll do anything to be in TV. I even kiss this old lady. I've no idea. It was, was a youth show. Was, was MTV? MTV was kicking off at this time, right? 
Yeah, I think, so, but, but like, a different channel. Like Trigger uh, Happy TV, maybe? I don't know, man. I don't know. Primary school there with production value slightly higher than the original show. OK, over to Jules Holland for your next question. Hello, Jimmy. You'll remember that I was the co-presenter of the legendary pop show The Tube, and I once committed an act considered so heinous that it resulted in the programme being taken off air for three weeks. But what did I do? Did he swear? He left his original band, Squeeze. That's all I got. Correct. <laughs> he confused us all with his first name, Jules. You know, you know about Jules Holland's show, right? Of course not. He's like that all the bands... Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I remember that from our Oasis deep dive. Yeah, yeah. That. I remember his yeah. name. Yeah, and he was in the band Squeeze. He was their keyboard player. You heard that song, Tempted by the Fruit of Another. Yeah, that one? Yeah, that's him. He's not the singer. He's the keyboard player. Wow, okay. Yeah. You've got ever such good writing, haven't you? Thank you very much. Are you Catholic? Catholic. The Catholics write particularly yeah. well. Yeah, Catholics have a certain way of doing an S. He's doing the writing, and I recognise that he was Catholic from that. You recognise he was Catholic from his handwriting? Did I not? Yeah, I'm writing in Latin. OK. Following the test of the groundbreaking Network 7 with all the wobbly cameras, the same team launched its less successful follow-up, running in the summer of 1989, broadcast live rather unwisely from a nightclub. What was it called? So it was a follow-up to Network 7, broadcast live from a club. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I, hey, I say, this is youth TV in the sort of 80s and 90s when we weren't youths, were we? Well, Jack and Frank. N no. 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 I think it's an unfair advantage to our friends, uh, to Team 9, the... What were they called again? I think some kind of bunch of fuckwits or something. That's <laughs> How are you doing with, with Alan, Jack? Fine, we've got the answer. We're ready to go. <laughs> Purely a business arrangement between us. No I... heavy petting, no chit chat, just good old fashioned answers. <laughs> it's a quiz. Exactly. Yeah. Not dating. Thank yeah. you. That's how I like it when I'm in a quiz. I don't want any of that nonsense. No fun. Mm. I mean, a quiz, it's an exam, isn't it? <laughs> we should think of it as such. Yes. It's an exam. We will get degrees in media studies at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Channel Fair have invented youth TV, but they certainly didn't forget the younger kids. Here's stripy TV anarchist Pob and his friend Teddy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Is that what the youths were watching? What? No wonder they're so fucked up. I am in... Uh, this is 2007. Who was that? that? I don't is this know. predating? Is this like, remember, more the UK? Like, I was my my Wallace and Gromit. Wallace and Gromit, yeah. That was all. That was the first introduction I had to anything UK. Then directly yeah. after that was keeping up appearances with Miss Bucket. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. that's it. My my throw was Harry Potter and uh, Codeplay. Those were my two first introductions of British culture. There you go. Yeah. I, think, I don't know why you're laughing. I think the puppeteer had a stroke. Yeah, that's what I'm laughing. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that, was, that was Pob. What I want to know is, can you tell me, how did Pob write his name every week during the show's title sequence? Yeah. Caused controversy. That's a clue. And it's come. Oh, dear. No. That's own. That's own. OK. And finally, over to John. It's come. That's awesome. Oh, God. Oh, man. If I Listen, if I haven't been with you guys for three and a half fucking years, I'd be like, what? But now I'm just like, fuck it. Makes sense. It yeah. could be or couldn't be. We aimed that very differently. You just laugh at every fucking thing, and I'm just like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? If you can, why wouldn't you? That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Like On Snow. Uh, what channel classic is he reporting on here? A young British boy is at the centre of attention from the world's media following multiple sightings of the child allegedly in mid-flight over parts of Britain and the North Pole. Eyewitness accounts clearly describe the boy wearing blue striped garments, flying in the company of an unidentified pale-skinned man said to be well-built with a prominent orange nose and deep-set eyes. When questioned, the boy claimed to be embarrassed by the sightings, stating that as far as he was aware, 
the people far below had been sleeping as they flew. Is that the snowman? I guess. Advert? I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't... Done it. Done. Finished. For the acting out, what have you got? The word. The word. The word. Was, of course, the legendary show, The Word. The word. Do you all remember the, the granny snogged young man? I don't remember that, but my, it was my favourite programme. Maybe that's why. She was on it. Let's have a little look at Carol's mum in action. <laughs> Your old time, Tom. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Guy likes cougars. What can you say? Cougars, and... bro. That's not cougars. That is like <laughs> uh, geriatric. That's different. That's on a <laughs> different fucking level of cougar, bro. That's yeah. different. That's not even. Oh, God. Anyway, yeah. It's saying. Did he play Jeff in Peep Show? That has to be Jeff from Peep Show. Come on. You know, you, you got to... Looks like him, right? It, it could... I don't think it is, but it could be. Wow. Yeah. It could be. Well, I don't yeah, think I, it is. I, I think it is. I think it is. Let us know. Let us oh, know. I got this job. <laughs> I think Catherine Zeta-Jones is watching this and thinking, what? what's the fuss about? <laughs> wasn't my mum, by the way. That's not your mum? That wasn't my mum, no. <laughs> You would have put more tongue in, is that what you're saying? <laughs> okay, uh, Jules Holland, I did to get the tube suspended for three weeks. Let's see what you got. We didn't know whether he'd bummed that man in Ollie Oaks, <laughs> but we went for using the F word instead. <laughs> using the F word you've got? He said, um, groovy fuckers about you. He said, if you're a groovy fucker, watch the tube. Well, let's have a look and see. The tube was taken off air because I swore during a live afternoon trail for the show. That was unacceptable. And I hope you groovy fuckers got that right. <laughs> Absolute legend. What was the name of the nightclub based youth TV show that followed Network 7? We've gone for Network 7 and a half. Is it right? No. OK. <laughs> OK, uh, Frank and Carol? Uh, well said, Club X. Alan and Jack, you've also gone? Club X. We've got Club X. Well, I can tell you, you are absolutely right. It was Club oh. X. Oh, oh, well. <laughs> Let's have a look. Lucinda Cuxley is the playwright with the only drama group in Britain called Loose Exchange, which can put together a whole play in less than an hour. Knowledge is power. Yeah, and power is money. The time, Mr. Wolf. She's mental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the only thing. What's the time, Mr. Wolf? Put your hands over your ears. Pick a colour. Blue. Dinner time. Ah! What? <laughs> what in that school club is this? Whatever, no, you've seen this. You see, guys, this is actual footage from Arlington, Virginia. <laughs> this is the Arlingtonian night scene to a T <laughs> still. Uh, yeah. Bunch of uh, on uh, trust funds that can't find themselves and can't find a job. And so they make everyone else lost with their fuckery. Yeah. Yep, pretty much, pretty much. Sometimes best to spend more time on writing a play, isn't it? Whoever said that the problem with plays is how long they take to write? You know, we've got to... God, we've got to get these things out quicker because they're so popular. <laughs> just, just take your time, yeah. you know? They last forever. <laughs> um, how did Paul write his name? Your answers? What have you got, Alan? He wrote his name in his own gob. Carolyn Frank, what have you got? We've got uh, that he spat on yeah, the camera. Yeah, he used the camera, didn't he? And then he? Rip, rip with his finger. Mm. Ugh. It is gone. Lens. You, what have you we thought? went for breathed. We thought he breathed in it and then wrote his name in the, <clears throat> in the condensation. Well, let's have a little look and see, shall we? Let's have a little look at Bob. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm look, him. I say that, that was a sort of breathy, spitty no, sort of hybrid. Look. OK, well, well I, I grew up in Northampton and I know what it's like to be spat at. <laughs> OK, um... Well, I can. He actually. Well, the, the makers claim it was breath on the camera, but everyone else thought it was spit, and it caused yeah. controversy at the time. Yeah. It's Imagine caused those... controversy today, hasn't it? <laughs> well, he clearly has problems speaking. I like he's yeah. got. He's not got diction. <laughs> of, you know anyone, and out slightly spittily. I think he should be cut a break. Hmm. <laughs> I'm cutting him, though. You will get a point. Okay. What was John's talking about? What do you think? Snowman. Yeah. You can care. The snowman. Definitely the snowman. Mm -hmm. Which also sounds like his rap name. <laughs> I think when he actually drops his hip hop joint, that will be the name of his disc. I'm dropping the snowman, he'll say. I'm a nerd, okay? <laughs> Leave me be. Okay, so you'll, you'll say the snowman. It was, of course, the snowman. 
Well done. Got it. Got it. Knew that from the parody Iron, the Iron Iron, where uh, the kid went into his Iron Brew, so uh, the snowman dropped him. Yep. <laughs> Which is a proper uh, response to yeah. not your Iron Brew, because it will man. get you through. All the time. Mm-hmm. Got us today, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's take out the scores. Uh, Alan and Jack have 15 points. They're in the lead. Carol and Frank have 14. Richard and David still in with a chance with 10. OK, we've got time for a special bonus question from one of the legends of Channel 4 comedy. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Mr Vic Reeves. Yay! There he is. Yes. Come on, Jim. What do you want me for? Well, Vic, I'm doing a quiz. Yay. Yeah, good. Do you have a question to ask them about your illustrious yes. Channel 4 comedy career? When we first started on uh, Channel 4... Oh! It was in the last century. When Bob Mortimer, my partner, came onto the stage holding a long pole and wearing uh, a paper helmet, would the audience cry out? You've, you've got to write this down. That's a pro. What? What? I don't know. Bob. It's, it's oh, Bob, Bob Mortimer. There you go. Give more love to his partner, Vic Reeves, too. Yeah, we definitely need to. Yeah. Because they were a duo. Yeah. Were a duo. Yeah, yeah. Very hard to write it down and not just shout it. You can shout it in a minute. Hello, David Mitchell. Hello. <laughs> what do you want me to do now, then, Jim? Well, <laughs> let's see what the answer is, Vic. Let's see. Let's see one for. Let's see if they've got it. And over there, it says, "What's on the end of the stick, Vic? <laughs> give us some. What's on the end of the stick, Vic? What's on the end of the stick, Vic? I can give these two." People, uh, correct answer. That one is just too indescriptive. Oh. What's on the end of no, the? It's, it's obviously end. I can't help it if you're pissed. <laughs> well, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Vic Reeves. <laughs> Good night. You've all been wonderful. Thank you very much. Coming up after the break, find out how some of the biggest names in comedy owe their careers to Channel 4. David Mitchell started in Peep Show. Alan Carr burst onto our screens in the Friday Night Project, and of course. For many years, the bubbly, loose-knickered slut Kimberly in Hollyoaks was played by Jack D. <laughs> See you after the break. <laughs> well, Welcome 4 has launched many comedy careers. Ricky Gervais, Sasha Baron Cohen, Simon Pegg and I all started here. Some of us have ended up in Hollywood starring in Simon movies Pegg? Living the Dream. Some of us have... Yeah, Simon Pegg. Start on Channel 4? I guess so. Um, oh. oh, what's... What's one of the shows? It's one of those shows that keeps getting thrown at us, but keeps losing the Patreon poll. Wow. Yeah. I mean, Sasha Borat. I mean, uh, Ali G, right? Okay. The, okay. Yeah. I didn't know him Peg. Yeah. Of course. I mean, he did, you know, sitcoms. He, was, he did movies. Yeah. So, yeah. Stayed here. A lack of talent. I say loyalty. Uh huh. <laughs> Friday night, Ben Elton, he's big break, but Channel 4 is big enough to admit it's made mistakes. <laughs> Channel 4 was the launch pad for some of our panellists tonight. The intelligent observations of David Mitchell, the high camp of Alan Carr, and, of course, the hangdog, world-weary grumpiness of Carol Vorderman. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of Channel 4's funniest moments. Hello! <laughs> Whoa! I'm on a boat in Holland! No, with us. I'm Matt Garlic Bread. It's the future. I've tasted it. I love my bread! Father Ted! There must be old people in the world, otherwise they would not be any graveyards. I may be blind, but I know how to play the concertina. A man is threatening bloody. Oh! Voice in the house, make it feel it like a mouse. <laughs> okay. I love that we recognized a few of them. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yes. So, so quick, let me know in the comments. That first one with the massive cell phone, that was Trick or Happy TV. Had to be. Had to be. Because yeah. I think that was before your time, bro. I think it was. Yeah. Because that was when MTV was doing its wackadoo shit. And I think Spike TV just had a thing. And yeah. then Spike TV had Trigger Happy TV. And that shit had me dying all the time. So. All right. All right. Now that I've got right. that anecdote out of the way. All right. Cool. Some questions. Saturday Live and its predecessor, Friday Night Live was the training ground for many of Britain's finest comedians and Ben Elton. Harry Enfield shot to fame with loads of money, but can you tell me what was loads of money's profession? Oh, I don't know. Enfield. Ooh. Enfield? David, it's saying that you would not consider it. Enfield? Yeah. Harry Enfield? Yeah. What's his profession? I have no idea. Uh, Harry Enfield and Chums? I don't know. 
a profession, probably just a job. Cross out. Bishop. <laughs> yeah. OK. Your next courtesy of Desmond star, Ram John Holder. Hi, Jimmy. Obviously, the greatest Channel 4 sitcom of all time was Desmond's, in which I starred as Pork Pie. Yeah, man. But do the channel know where in the world was Desmond's barber shop? Oh, I know this. Again, don't know. Like, that's one that I haven't suggested yet. So... Yeah, I feel like a lot of these are, like, a deep dive. Yeah, it's something like yours down the road. Yeah, these are yeah. deep right here. Oh, yeah. Ashby de la Zouche. <laughs> Might be a double bluff, Martin. Yeah. <laughs> the Potter is. <laughs> Um, okay. Oh, I know. Steve Coogan charmed his way into the public's affections with his early appearances as Paul Calf on Saturday Zoo. I want you to tell me what group of people did Paul Calf especially hate? British TV presenters. Yeah. That's all I got. I'm, I'm going with you on that one. Okay. They're plural, Jimmy Carr. Okay, another picture clue for now. Say what you see to find a line made famous by a comedian whose career was launched by Channel Four back in 1998. Uh, oh fuck! That's wasabi, right? Yeah, ear pimple wasabi is black. Is that black? Yeah, black. Yes, yeah, Jack Black. Jack, I Jack, uh, cross Jack, cross eyes, crazy eyes, crazy. Uh, okay, so ears. Is it with black? Probably almost. I would say um, crocodile hunter. I'm so Bill. Kill, Kill Bill. Bill. Oh. <laughs> Carol may have thought of something rude. That is so easy. Can we move on now, please? The next question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The comic strip Five Go Mad in Dorset was the first comedy to be broadcast on Channel 4. But which core member of the comic strip team was not in it? Who oh, was that? No clue. Who the fuck okay. is the comic yeah, strip? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Right. Okay. I think it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's see how they did on our comedy round. Uh, what did loads of money do for a living? What have you all got? <laughs> Plaster. Builder. Plaster builder. Answer. No, but that is part oh. of the building. Gary, Dave, shut up. He was still asleep. Frankie Walsh was his catchphrase. Yeah. Does he sound Polish? <laughs> He's not a builder then. It does sound a bit Polish. As a surname, <laughs> loads of money does loads sound a bit Polish. Yeah, no, it does a bit Polish, yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah. Loads of money. Yeah. <laughs> well, OK. Ram John Pie asked you where Desmond's barbershop was located. Yeah. What did you come up with? Uh, you've gone for... Peckham. Peckham. Interesting, both gone for Peckham, you've gone for... Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> Was it a... We weren't 100%. Oh. Well, let's see what's nice. right, Peckham or Switzerland. Oh, it could the... be a third place, couldn't it? It could be a third place, we don't know yeah. until we get the answer. Come on, Switzerland, Switzerland, Switzerland. Of course, is that Desmond's barber shop was in Peckham, South London. I hope you all got it right. Oh, that, that, was, that was a specific disapproval of us. He might as well have said, I hope some idiot didn't write down Switzerland. OK, I asked you, did Steve Coogan's character Paul Calf dislike? What did you all put? Students. 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 Well, you're absolutely right. Let's have a look. I've been to buy a dog this week, you know, I went to pet shop. I said, can I have something nice and cuddly? And I, he said, we've got two pit bull terriers. I said, oh, what do them do? <laughs> said, we've got one for 50 quid and one for 30 quid, right? But the one that's 30 quid got a bit of a problem. He attacks students. <laughs> That's a lot of the cheaper model. I look, can I just tell you, my, my worst ever Christmas present was a video um, of Pauline Calf. I love Pauline Calf. My husband, my then, put this for me, you see. And my, no, my birthday is Christmas Eve, so I woke, I woke Christmas morning to put the turkey in the oven at five o'clock. I know what I do. I watch Pauline Calf on the video. Put it in, watching it, laughing for half an hour until she got to the bit where, I tell you, I can't fucking stand that fucking Carol Bardeman. Oh. Think worst Christmas present ever. Oh, you don't that. mind me swearing? I was you, repeating. You divorced him over that. <laughs> Seems a bit harsh, is all I'm saying. <laughs> Can you imagine half past five on Christmas morning? Oh, oh for you, Carol. And you yeah. think about that when Ben Elton watches this show. He, yeah. That's how he's going to feel. Thinking, well, I wrote Blackadder. I've done all right. Maybe some of the younger comedians who host quiz shows might like some of my earlier work, even if they think the move to musical theatre wasn't the wisest. <laughs> Shaking his head and bringing the gun slowly up to his temple. <laughs> okay. Uh, you had I say what you see clue. What what have you got? Ah. Is it cause black? Okay, and you've gone for Chid and David? Is it because I black. and Carolyn Frank, you probably got this as well. Quite We've an easy got, sort of word uh, Is it le <laughs> le 
lettuce ice thing. I thought it was the name of a comedian launched. I rejected all well, of the things I worked out that didn't coincide with a catchphrase I'd heard. That was my technique. But I will say the quiz isn't over. I wouldn't be giving away your techniques. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the behind the scenes <laughs> there. How this is done. I had an idea that I thought would be worth mentioning at this point. Um, you know, on yeah. they've actually got two desks next to each other, but when it's on television, they're on top of each other. Yeah. I thought you could do that with this. And there'd be like three <laughs> rows of us. Like y yeah. celebrity squares. I always wondered how they did that when I was watching that show, University <laughs> Challenge. Which is probably why I didn't get into university. <laughs> we can pretend we're looking at Carol's skirt. Pretending that would make a change for you, wouldn't it, Frank? Dirty bastard. <laughs> OK, I asked you a member of the core comic strip team was not in Five Go Mad in Dorset. What did you reckon? Rick Mayle. You went for Rick Mayle? You went uh, for... A. Edmondson. You went for Rick Mayle? Yeah. Rick Mayle is the correct answer. Uh... A. Edmondson is in. OK, let's have a check-in on the scores. Uh, Alan and Jack still in the lead with 21. Carol and Frank with 17. Richard and David bringing up the rear with 14. <laughs> Time now for a bonus round on Channel 4 Sport. This shouldn't take too long. Channel 4 is perhaps best known for the horse racing. It was said to be the Queen Mother's favourite programme, but only because, sadly, she didn't live long enough to see skins. <laughs> Channel 4 also screened ethnic sport Kabaddi, which I think Madonna's really into. Because when you win, you get to keep the other team's children. Uh, <laughs> right, on to the questions. Uh, oh, why uh, you got to do Madonna like that? Whatever. She walked into that with her whole everything. <laughs> just adopting people from all over the globe. Not, not against that, I'm just saying. Yeah. Fact. So, so uh, Brad copied Madonna is what you're saying. 100%. 100%. Hmm. Uh, take a look at this clip of popular Indian sport, Kabaddi. So Sheila, trying for Tamil Nadu. And they've gone for her leg again. Great what? move by Fulmani Kisku and West Bengal move ahead by a vital point. Number seven, Fulmani Kisku anticipates well, goes down and gets a firm grip on her leg. <clears throat> Come on, West Bengal. <laughs> Who are you? Yeah. Sorry. Um, what I want to know is, uh, what are the rules of Kabaddi? I don't know. You have to pretend there's a ball. What? Yeah, yeah. See, trouble with me, I can't it's take like... women's Kabaddi seriously. It's, it's like ESPN Ocho. Yeah, ESPN 8, the Ocho. The Ocho. Cool. I don't get man. I I've don't know. I've never seen this sport ever. This is the first time I've ever heard it referenced ever, period. So Is is this a weird sport that we gotta check dude, out? Dude, if we hey listen, if we check out Kabaddi, we are checking out Trigger Happy TV. <laughs> okay. We got you. Okay. Put that. Yeah. trouble with me. I can't take women's kabaddi seriously. It's a man's game. <laughs> Sorry. Like celebrity kabaddi. <laughs> kabaddi ice. <laughs> Brilliant. I'll give, I'll give the key rules you get. There's one. There's basic things you've got to do in kabaddi. You feeling pretty good about that? <laughs> if that's not the rules, that's a bloody good game. OK, all right, let's have a look and see what you've got for the rules of kabaddi. Richard and David, take me through. Right. You have to run at the opponent's team and somehow break through and get back while holding your breath. <laughs> I partly did tell Dave that as a joke. Is it anything like that, though? Pretty close. You'll get, you'll get up for that, because the holding your breath thing, quite key. Well, they chant sometimes. There's a chant. They chant. Kabaddi. Yeah. That's why it's called... Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not that chant there is. There are other... Dis where there's different kinds I've of I've only had one clip, so... I, I, I question your recording it Kabaddi, cos why, why then is not called the referee's a wanker? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good point well made. I'll look into that for you. Thank Carol you. and Frank, what have you gone with? Well, we've got Shout Kabaddi. Yeah, got that it, it's kind of like tag. I used to play in a, in a, a park as a youth, and the local Asian community played Kabaddi at the side as we played football. And it looked a lot like, you know, tick your eye. They would stand in two halves and then one would run into the, the thing and he'd try and uh, tick one of the, uh, that team. Kabaddi. Uh, they all seem to shout Kabaddi. That's exactly the right answer. Well done. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, wow. Before we get carried away with applause, Alan and Jack, what did you put? What we've got here is you get hold of people's legs and, that's, and then you slap them <laughs> so your mobile is, is videoing them. Then you, you put it on YouTube. <laughs> You've been kabaddied. <laughs> You do not get a point for that. No, the, the rules are, point to anyone mentioned, uh, you basically got to pale while saying, while running into the opponent's team and trying to tag them. Mm. See, it's brilliant. That. OK, another sports question. On what show would you have found astronomer Patrick Moore's disembodied head enhanced with a cybernetic eye dispensing advice <laughs> to children? Any guesses? Did they have Power Rangers back then? I don't know. Bill Nye? Anything like that? I, 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 I'm, Jim I'm will lost. fix it? I Maybe? don't know. Possibly? 
That's mm -hmm. nuts. Fine, let's move on. OK, what, what did you... Teams? Uh, games Master. Games Master. Richard David? Playing a computer game show for nerds like us, but even we didn't watch. <laughs> they predicted Twitch streams! <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. Come on. But correct. Alan and Jack. 15 to 1. <laughs> you thought Patrick Moore's disembodied head, enhanced with a cybernetic eye, dispensing advice to children, was on 15 to 1. <laughs> And I, I realise uh, we can't be right because obviously Anne, Anne Robinson is hosting it. Okay, Games Master is right down, so you get a point oh, there. Oh, we get a point there. Okay, this. Another sporting for you. Take a look at this clip documenting some behind the scenes sporting rivalries. He started spitting at me, uh, pushing me down. Also, as I sat down, he then put two fingers, tried to poke my eyes out. And then as he got off the coach, he elbowed me in the back of the head. Mr. McGiffin was having none of it. I don't know how you can say that. After the evening meal last night, we had a bit of good humoured banter that he did not want to participate in. I think the important thing with good humoured banter is it has to be from both sides, doesn't it? Rather than. <laughs> anyway, OK, that took place at the World Cup final of which sport? Uh... Cricket. Cricket. Uh, I, because I just... it's like there's one. Oh, well. Right. If, if, I, if football, there'd be no survivors. We've seen right. all that culture. There's no way that's football. Yeah, yeah. Has to be it. I'll give you that. We know that. Does it matter? I mean, it's it's a Scotsman. It could be anything. Well, <laughs> 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 finally, could. <laughs> okay, let's see what you. Okay, you've gone for. Sabutio. Uh, sorry, Richard. How do you spell Sabutio again? Um, well, no, we valid lots of different ways. Yeah. <laughs> uh, basically, given you the letters yeah. and you, you can know. arrange them. It does look like sub bus at the moment, <laughs> uh, but we which to Exabutio. Uh, it's interesting that we couldn't spell it because it was actually written over the man's shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> Make it the hardest in the world, but a little bit too hard for us still. So. But near enough, Sabutio. Let's have a look. What is what? By the morning of the game, Bob McGiffin stood accused of trying to sort out his son's opponent man to man. No time now for McGiffin. It's all over. And that's it. Carl jubilant with the victory there. Heard Come Carl on. Young shouting justice there. What Come is on. that sport? Time out. We're fixing this. The fuck is it called? Uh, let me back. Can right you back, back it up? What? Sabu. Near enough, Sabutia. Let's okay. have a look. There you go. There you go. Google that. Because this is S -U. interesting. Sabutio. No yeah. way. There's a Sabutio. USA, by the way. Is there? Do they have their equivalent of Ron Vogel? Hasbro. In... Hasbro. Bought Waddington in 1994. What and the they hell? relaunched it in 2005. What the hell? It's so a tabletop is... football game which players simulate association football by flicking miniature players with their fingers. Yo! <laughs> I am a picture of that while I... Am here right now, and uh, I think uh, another weird to check out. Like we're circling back weird sports. Like, but while most closely associated with the football games, versions of Sabudio based on the other team sports such as cricket, both codes of rugby and hockey also have been produced. That's Wikipedia. What skills, dexterity, and tactics? So what? Well, hold on, hold on. It's a game. By Hasbro. By um, Hasbro? I no. There's no way. I'm 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 taking all of that shit. Oh it's Wikipedia. Yeah. Wikipedia, straight up. Wikipedia. Oh Sabudio. I see it. Oh my god. What the flying fuck? I'm there for it. Whatever. If it's tabletop, oh, I'm I'm there. Yeah. Oh, wants to check that out? Let us know. Let's just you want us to compete. Hashtag compete. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the morning of the game, Bob McGiffin stood accused of trying to sort out his son's opponent man to man. No time now for McGiffin. It's all over. And that's it. Carl jubilant with the victory there. Heard Carl Young shouting justice there. <laughs> it's been settled in favour of the Welsh boy Carl Young. John McGiffin doesn't want to know. Join us after the break for more Big Fat Anniversary Quiz. There'll be gay kissing, genital reconstruction and full frontal nudity. And we'll be showing some clips as well. <laughs> Sign me up. You know, welcome back to the Big Fat Anniversary... What's up? You know what's funny? 
not once and and like since its inception they have always showed south park somewhere on this screen not oh, once really? have they brought in south park ever i don't know i i, I guess because it's it's themed in tv yeah. that's why they're showing it and i guess south park was shown yeah. on channel four all right yeah Quiz. In the next round, we're talking about controversy. Channel 4 hasn't just courted controversy, it got controversy drunk and fucked it on the first date. <laughs> but Channel 4 admits when it gets it wrong. It issued an apology for racism in the Big Brother house. It issued an apology for screening The Last Temptation of Christ. And it issued an apology for Titty Bang Bang. <laughs> Even though that wasn't a Channel 4 show. <laughs> On to the questions. Right. What did Hugh Fernley Whittingstall participate in cooking and eating on TV dinners in 1998 that prompted an unprecedented flood of complaints? Yes, uh, it was. Sure. Do you know, we once were controversial on Countdown. Can I tell you about you, it? What did you do? And, well, it was Richard. Richard was sent a tie that had Countdown written down it. Uh, and, it no, it's tr and, and it was a Christmas show and he thought it was lovely, so he put it on. And then we recorded it and it was transmitted. And then everyone phoned in to complain because he'd sat down behind the desk and the down had disappeared. <laughs> and then he put his microphone over the O. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I get it. I get it. Just move your microphone down just a little bit. Cover or the up. U. Cover the U. In every case, Always cover the U in lettering. Mm-hmm. Just there's... for just for just for safety. Just yep. Yep. But now I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> no one noticed. That's fantastic. <laughs> that was our Richard. <laughs> what a brilliant thing. I know. Okay. Here's 2002's groundbreaking, the autopsy. Please go ahead. Would it not be a sign of respect to move your remove your hat? It's a question to me. I don't have. Uh, well, it's, a, it's, a it's a question to, to me. Or? This is a question to me. I mean, uh, it's it's a respect to the people in which tradition I feel myself. <laughs> it is a. I think the amazing thing about that is someone from the audience says, you know, would it be a Margaret? Go on. And, and the chap without the hat said, "Are you talking to me?" <laughs> I'm talking to the bloke with the hat on. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, with respect, I mean, if, if I was, if my naked cadaver was being cut open on live television by someone wearing a hat, <laughs> the wearing a hat bit is the bit I would least object to. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't mind that at all. I would prefer just not to be there. If he'd have dressed like completely like those blokes in the painting, that would have been a fabulous program. <laughs> <laughs> He was a kind of a cavalier doing a post-mortem. He's <laughs> <laughs> buckling his way through the corpse. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, a bit of a smile to Cavalier. Is that real? I don't know. They I don't know. No, probably. Fucking way. There's no way that was real. Look, they could show more stuff on TV after well, 9 p.m. in that I, country. I mean, like, I get that, but. <laughs> that, that's there's not too much that's off limits. That's absolutely nuts. Like I don't care if the the dead have signed their bodies away to science, you know, or however it works over there. That's there's a line. We have that line in the sand. I thought as as humanity goes, no one crosses that. Apparently for not. Fucking psychopaths. Have you met some of them from over there? I mean the ninety-nine percenters? Yeah. 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 I'm just okay. saying. Fair enough. Fair just enough. Saying. That's nuts to me. <laughs> God. I, I can't I can't believe that you're having such a strong reaction to it. Like, like there's this, this... no way. Can you back that up? Is that can we see a dead dude? All right. You wanna see a dead guy? Yeah. There has to be. Is that dude, is that a real dude? I oh, don't know. Is that a real dude? It's possible. Bro. It's possible. 
Okay, Karen. I'm just I, saying. I thought this was Britain. I thought they had freedom of speech after yeah, 9 p.m. Excuse me, excuse me. I thought we lived in America. I thought we lived in America. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, I got that. All right, Stan, Mark. I got you. It's all right. It's all right. Fair enough. You do what you do over there. But still, God damn it. That's someone's fucking dad. Fuck. All right, cool. 15 yeah. minutes post mortem. 15 minutes of fame, post mortem. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine. I guess that's cool. What <laughs> the shit? There's no way. There's no way we've gone through so many fucking world wars and conflict to have dead people fucking cut open on live TV. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over it. Uh, oh my God. That's awesome. Uh, I'm going to run this forward. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I, I just had to, I just had to see it, but uh, now I'm, I'm like, I'm a believer now seeing that picture. I'm like, no, there's no way. Then oh I God, saw his no face <sighs> and all of his guts. I'm a yeah. believer. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Uh, all right. <laughs> to be honest, with respect, I mean, if, if I was, if my naked, the wearing a hat bit is the bit I would least object to. <laughs> you wouldn't I wouldn't mind that at all. I would prefer just not to be there. <laughs> if he'd have dressed like, completely like those blokes in the painting, that would have been a fabulous programme. <laughs> <laughs> it was a kind of a cavalier doing a post mortem <laughs> <laughs> Swashbuckling his way through the corpse. <laughs> 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 Of a smile to camera. You could swing in on a chandelier and cut it open. <laughs> Possibly a roundhead cadaver. <laughs> have a whole room populated by corpses who don't fight back, <laughs> like, but sort of caught in tavern poses. And then in comes the autopsy guy. <laughs> Chainsaw. <laughs> He died of cancer. <laughs> Heart disease. <laughs> Mysterious. <laughs> I'm out of here to the next corpse pub. <laughs> I want you to tell me what's the connection between the autopsy and the coffee shop in Friends. What's the question on that one? Central Perk. Uh... What? What's the connection between the coffee shop in Friends and that corpse? <laughs> now I'm confused. I'm here for it. I don't know. I need to see their answer. I am so lost. Yeah. Uh, my guess is is that that body was not dead. In terms of life, it was on a break. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Come on. Come on. We're in so deep now. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're out Take here now. Take the ride man. with me. Um, sure, I'm there with you. What? Um. <laughs> uh. Would you like some chocolate? Very much. <laughs> Carol, your detox has gone to shit. <laughs> Red Bull, <laughs> chocolate, chocolate button. <laughs> You're on a fucking pot noodle next. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up. Okay. What have Dr. Fox, Phil Collins, Richard Blackwood and Philippa Forrester got in common? These people all appeared in a controversial Channel 4 show. I still haven't heard the question properly. What's wrong with Philippa Forrester? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with her? I've only got one line. Um... <laughs> oh. OK. All right. Now back to the children of Mitchell Brook Primary in Neasden. What controversy are they acting out here? Okay, so what controversy are the kids from Mitchell Book Primary School oh, acting out? 
has to be something to do with X Factor, right? Uh, or 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 an artist not being allowed to like like a Nirvana moment, you know when oh. they rebelled against MTV, uh, like on saying top of the, the song. Pop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe like Oasis, one of those. Yeah, Oasis also did it when they did Roll with It. Uh, Low Nolan Liam slopped, and then yeah, I know what you're talking about with like Nirvana. Like yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah like they weren't supposed to play a song, so they played it anyway, and they got banned. Mm-hmm. Something like that. They got black yeah. Which is so. what rock and roll should be instead of all that clear cut pop mm-hmm. shit. Yeah, one hundred percent. So, mm-hmm. all right. Yeah. I've written the show down now. <laughs> no room. There's no room. He's taking up the whole line with the name oh, of the show. I'm, I know what it is as well. Okay. For your final question oh, in this yeah. round, here's Darren Brown. Hello, Jimmy Carr. I'd like everybody to watch this clip, please. Okay. Take a moment. <laughs> you lost it, Darren. Okay, your question is this. What, that's what, did I make him do that made him call me a bastard? The way he said what twice there makes you think he now controls my mind. <laughs> Darren Brown wasn't in Hollyhoke, was he? <laughs> <laughs> okay. What, what had happened? Well, there are so many reasons for calling him that. <laughs> I went to see his live show and I really enjoyed it, which made me suspicious. <laughs> come on, Richard and David, come on. You could turn this around. There is nothing we can do to save ourselves. <laughs> We're just basically <clears throat> writing out a list of um, items we need to buy. <laughs> All right. Uh, how did you get on in round five? What did Hugh Fernley Whittingstall <clears throat> eat? Placenta. I like the way you say that. <laughs> the way you say placenta, it sounds like a very pretty girl's name. Thank you, placenta. <laughs> placenta, come in, tea's ready. <laughs> Bring your sister, sorry, sister Giblet. <laughs> 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 okay, so placenta, you've gone for. We've Same gone for... thing. Richard, David, you went for placenta. placenta. Fine, well, the answer I was looking for was human placenta. You all got it right. Well done. Have you heard of people eating placenta? Not in this country. Yeah, yeah. I haven't heard of it. I like I've some hippy dippy uh Gwyneth Paltrow following motherfuckers uh subscribe to the fact that after the birth of the child, the mother should eat the placenta. For health reasons, to, for the like breast that. milk or something, yeah, something like that. Like I've heard that, but I'm like, there aren't enough gemstones in the world that I need to hold. To eat yeah, that. yeah, hell no. Mm-mm. Okay. What was the connection between the autopsy and the coffee shop in Friends? Gun, okay. we think Gunter. Gunter. All right, you've gone for Carol and Frank. Well, I said I recognised that brick wall in the background. <laughs> Which was the same as in Central Perk, so it made me think that it was that was the similarity. That, <laughs> was, the that, that was our thinking as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So really, you've got for the connection between the two shows is yeah. exposed brickwork. <laughs> It's very, very trendy. It's very nice. And they had it in both of the things. Fine. The uh, the answer I was looking for was, of course, the name Gunther. Ah. Gunther. Oh. What? Wouldn't have gotten that. Wouldn't have gotten that. (sighs) Duh. It, It gives me a bad feeling in my gut, the fact that I got that wrong. Maybe the the bayonet guy should open it up and check it out. Ah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, hundred percent, man. I get yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, in Friends, Gunther runs the coffee shop, and the autopsy was, of course, masterminded by weird German anatomist Gunther von Haggins. But that is only as similar name and name as brickwork and brickwork. Yeah. Oh wait, there. There's a woman having a cappuccino on the front <laughs> row. <laughs> I've seen them have one of those in Central Park. No, it isn't a woman having a cappuccino. Which is why we didn't write it down, Alan. (laughs) We might have added that to our excellent answer. Is that Courtney Cox? Oh, it's a corpse. (laughs) It's obviously not the same show, Alan. We're not idiots. (laughs) You get a point, you get no point, you get no point. (laughs) Brickwork does not count as a collection. No, it's a victory for common sense. (laughs) (laughs) Stop getting into this now. (laughs) 
OK, fine. I asked you what Dr Fox, Phil Collins, Richard Blackwood and Philippa Forrester had in common. What show were they all involved with? Brass Eye. You've gone for... Brass Eye. Well, you're both right, because they, obviously they all uh, made appeals in the Brass Eye paedophile <laughs> special. Highly controversial show. You went for... We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, we couldn't think, could we? No, we couldn't. Have we any... hadn't really heard the question. It's not... Yeah. I'm a bit worried about how many we's are coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Just partners on the quiz, OK? Yeah. We're not a couple. <laughs> He's grumpy. He's always like this in the morning as well. <laughs> <laughs> Tea and toast. No. <laughs> <laughs> I want six. <laughs> <laughs> There's a sitcom definitely growing there. <laughs> you can look smug, Frank, sitting there next to Carol. <laughs> what, what you're you saying I that? don't scrub up nice? <laughs> you always do this when you go out, you fight. <laughs> yeah. OK, well, you go. <laughs> Brass Eye is another one that's been thrown at us in the uh, yeah. docu-series ones after uh, we finished Guy Martin. So if y'all want that, y'all know what to do. <laughs> yeah, they do make it. They would make a good sitcom, Alan Carr yeah. and Jack D. They, I'd they watch would. that. They would. It's yeah. it's it's the perfect balance, and I watch that. You need both. Yeah. You need both. Just like that's that's the reason why Peep Show works. They're the right. balance, but they're both right. unbalanced. So uh huh, works. balanced unbalancedness. Got a point for our side, for our side. You don't get a point because we don't know was not the correct answer. But not my wrong. <laughs> well done. Okay. What were the kids of Mitchell Brook Primary acting out? Okay. What have you got? Uh, it Alan? says um, Sean Ryder swearing on TFI Friday. You could not be any more right. What have you gone for? Yeah. Sean Ryder swears on TFI Friday. The right answer. And TFI Friday. Sean Ryder he swore. <laughs> Worded that... differently, but just as correct. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> He's still banned from live TV today. It's in the Channel 4 rule book. They haven't got that many rules, but one of them is Sean Ryder oh, cannot appear no. live. I don't believe wow. that. Genuinely. I used to work in the cloakroom at TFI Friday. <laughs> did you? Yep. Did yep. you really? What did you do there? Well, usually... <laughs> <laughs> it was quite interesting, actually. People would come in <laughs> and uh, they'd perhaps not want to take their coat or bag yeah. into the studio. And what I'd do is I'd literally, there were coat hangers with a ticket attached, and I'd literally take the ticket, tear it in half, it was like raffle tickets, and give them the number, which would then correspond to their coat on the hanger that they could then get back when they came out again. That's <laughs> I think the best job I've ever had. <laughs> OK, uh, Darren Brown asked why the young man had called him a bastard. Uh, what have you gone for, Alan and Jack? Well, it makes him rob a bank, because it isn't that heist. Is that what happens? OK, well, we'll see in a second. What have you gone for? He, he holds up a security guard in the street. What have you gone for, Richard and David? I, we think that he made him come in his pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was, you know, bending over. You bastard, you bastard. There was definitely a sort of and breathless was, yeah. ecstasy to that. He seemed quite pleased about it. Yeah. There was a kind of... There was certainly a sort of wily grin there. <laughs> Then do a bank heist yeah, after. We, we also <laughs> could be the bank thing slightly involved too. <laughs> well, let, let's uh, actually let's go and have a look. The answer is this: I made him and others steal a hundred thousand pounds in what they believed was a genuine armed robbery. The program was called the Heist. Have a look at this. Target is inside. Target is in drain one. Excuse me, mate. Get down on the floor. Down on the floor. Down on the you floor. Do it. On, your, on your front. Right, yeah. On your front. Look forward. Look forward. Oh my god. Mate, if you move, I swear to God, you're dead, mate. If you've got family. Wait! Get back! Get back! Danny. Oh, my God. <laughs> Bastard. That's, that's a moment of release right at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Just all came out. Why doesn't he put his... his... I mean, in Richard's defence, 
he did have a cocked something in his hand. 100%. 100%. 100%. All right. <laughs> but, man, I would be so mad if somebody forced me to rob a bank and I found out it was a, a Is prank this the same show. dude that made the guy think he was in the video game? It may have been. It may have been. So is he like a mentalist? Is he like a hypnotherapist? Like, let me know in the comments because he showed up twice now, so he must have been a big name. Yeah, to yeah, make I, I, twice. I'll give you, I'll give you that one. I, I recognize him too. His hypnotic powers to better use than that. Yeah. <laughs> if you can make people change their ways and do amazing thing, why not just go on to, and and say if you're a sex offender, stop it now, stop it now, Jimmy, come back, come back, Jimmy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a weight Weird. I feel like it's like a weight off my shoulders. What yeah. <laughs> so let's have a quick check in with the scores. Okay, Alan Carr and Jack D are in the lead with 26. Carol Vorderman and Frank Skinner have got 24. Oh, Only two oh, behind. God. Richard Iwadi, David Mitchell, 20. You could still do it if they die. <laughs> Is that no. part of the rule that you have to still be living at the end of the quiz? Still have to be living to collapse. Right. I'd rate our chances. We are, <laughs> we are the youngest team. Yeah. <laughs> at the beginning of the quiz, we were a young team. <laughs> right, it's now time for a bonus round. We're going to play the Who Are You game. Someone from Channel 4's illustrious past is going to walk out here and all you've got to do is tell me who they are, or more accurately, what show they were involved in. OK, well, we were going to get Terry Christian, but we couldn't remember where we buried him. <laughs> Round of applause, please, for our mystery guest. <laughs> Teams, you're allowed to ask our mystery guest some questions. Just yes or no questions. Do you want me to keep Frank away from you? <laughs> What, was it a music show? Hmm. Is, is that, is that no, yes. You're allowed to say yes if it's yes. Yes, yes. I had to think about it. Yes. Was it in the last ten years? No. Are you wearing calipers? <laughs> Don't mind him. They're lovely boots. He's he shops at Primark. <laughs> <laughs> Were you part of a band? Yes. Oh. Was the name of the band in the title of the programme? No. <laughs> Hang on. I, I'm pretty sure it's yes. Is it? Yeah, it is uh, yes. yes. Do you remember you did this thing? Yes. <laughs> you were in it. You should know all these basics, but don't worry. I'm here to cover for you. Yes, the name of the band was in the title ah, of the show. Oh. Did you sing in the show? Yes. Did okay, you? I, th I think you've asked enough questions. Oh, ah, well. I think you've got to write down your answers. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. Funny anyway. No idea. Have you have you all got an answer? Yeah, have you got we've a got, oh, we you've got an answer. So you've got an answer. We yeah. know the answer. Okay, let's see your answers. Okay, you've gone for what there? Sorry, Alan. <laughs> you for... hey, you've actually you've actually gone for the successful show. We don't know the fraggles. <laughs> <laughs> but some people who don't know the fraggles. They live a life totally separate from the fraggles. No, she's not one of the fraggles. Them being puppets and her being a proper oh, human sorry, being. Sorry, love. It's fine. You were close. Carol and Frank, you've gone for mini pops. <laughs> we thought she was about the right age to have been a, if it's more than ten years, to have been a child, about twenty years ago. Okay, and what? David and Richard, you've gone for mini pops. Yeah, yeah. And Richard wrote it this time, and I like his style. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay, well let's let's have a little look at a clip. That was a little creepy. I like all of it. All yeah. of the creep. This is why kids 
shouldn't sing adult songs. Mm-mm. Yeah. My baby takes the morning train. Uh-uh. That's not to, for kids to sing. Uh, it's all right. Back in the day, we were different, I guess. What uh, the shit? All right, cool. Yeah. It happened. Yeah. So you were, you were actually in the mini How old were you there when you filmed that? I was five years old when I filmed that. Oh my it was just fun. It was aimed for kids. It was done by kids. I was the youngest of the group. And uh, it ran for eight years, so we had Jeez. tremendous success. And all over the world, actually, we made nine albums, sold millions, so what? lots of fun. Do, do you still sell records? It's like kids bop type yeah, of shit. that's exactly what I was thinking about. Well, yeah. like, without the edited version. Yeah, yeah. I, they, apparently they still make them these days, and apparently I was just glancing on Spotify one t one day, and uh, there was, like, a kid's bop version of WAP, and I did not listen to it. I was like, how the hell are they going to make this into a kid's song? Mm -hmm. Every every download of that is like on a registry somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Like who the who is that for? No, no. I don't want to no know one. who that's for. Nope, nope. Hmm. Now, are, they still, are they still available? Can you still get mini pop stuff? I've seen them on eBay, actually. <laughs> on eBay. <laughs> don't, don't go out and buy them, or you'll be on some sort of register. <laughs> yeah. That's extraordinary because it's got kind of a negative connotation now because people think, well, that was, it looks a bit wrong looking back on it. But I imagine at the time it was fantastic for you, wasn't it? It was great fun. What an experience. I was Sheena Easton. Ladies and gentlemen, Joanna Fisher from the Mini Pops. Thank you so much for coming in. Well, join us after the break when we'll be talking about Channel 4's factual entertainment shows like Location, Location, Location and Property Ladder. Whenever I see Kirsty Olsop, I always think, I've got a semi. Maybe I should do something about that. <laughs> See you in two minutes. Okay. Welcome back to the Big Fat Anniversary Quiz. Channel 4 hasn't just entertained us over the last 25 years, it's also told us how to live our lives. What to eat, what to wear, where to live, and what our poo should look like. <laughs> You are what you eat, beg the question. What has Gillian McKeith eaten? The witch from Rent-A-Ghost? <laughs> location, 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 property ladder, grand designs. Yes, Channel 4 has helped us all buy better houses. Well, certainly, it's helped me. <laughs> <laughs> and we had 10 Years Younger, a great show, and also Chris Langham's favourite Google search. <laughs> now, before we get on to the uh, final questions, Carol, you've made some factual entertainment shows for Channel 4. I've made some factual shows, yes. Do schools you remember programs. any of them specifically? Um, I made a lot of schools programmes and educational programmes. You made one in 1987 <laughs> that is my favourite show ever on Channel 4. <laughs> Let's have a little look. Oh, God. Is it wise to spend so much time sitting in front of a screen? <laughs> Brian Pierce, a research fellow at Loughborough University of Technology, is a consultant on ergonomics, health and safety issues. So if your brother-in-law was going to buy a computer, what sort of advice would you give him on this issue? Wow, look at those earrings. How do you even notice the earrings? Look at that sweater. That yeah, was, it's like something from was, QVC. That was very <laughs> 80s. That was very in in the 80s. It looks like the lion's got cataracts, the way it is in the light. <laughs> was the computer behind you really that big? We <laughs> 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 were in those days. <laughs> The amazing thing as well is how shifty that bloke looks. <laughs> Man. Call Tarantino eyes. <laughs> okay. Right. On. I was just going to say, Carol, like, she has not aged at all from no. the 80s to 2007. My God. Remember the. Uh, maybe not. Remember what? The animal print shirts. Uh, maybe they, they they usually make a rare appearance in the elderly in like state fairs, but like yeah, that's I felt like I saw a lot more animal print shirts when I was a kid, and Got that it. that was a, a time stamp of the of the moment I would say. All right, <laughs> At, uh, just everything like oh my god, us with technology back in the day.
And I say that as me. Yeah. Fighting technology every day. Yeah. Yeah. And we basically make a living staring at a screen, at a computer screen. <laughs> oh, how times have changed. Mm. On with the questions. Uh, take a look at this picture from 1985's extraordinary show, All Stitched Up. What On the left it? is one of the show's hosts, who I believe bought her clothes from Carol Vorderman in the 80s. <laughs> Charmian Watkins is her name. I want you to guess what she specialises in advising viewers on. Um, clown skills. <laughs> You've got to write these down. Yeah. Oh. Do you know what she does? OK, over to Super Nanny Joe Frost for your next question. As you probably know, I have a tried and tested technique for dealing with unacceptable behaviour called the naughty step. If Jimmy was to misbehave himself tonight, I would recommend putting him on the naughty step for exactly 35 minutes. Can you tell me why? So why would I be on the naughty step for 35 years? She said minutes. <laughs> minutes? 35. <laughs> I'm a very <laughs> naughty boy. Oh, was, was there a clue in that mistake just then? <laughs> Slightly, yes. <laughs> okay, um... I know why I'd be on the naughty step for 35, uh, minutes. minutes. Um, but Focus I can't on. say it. What's the naughty step? I don't know, man, but... <sighs> I just know I'd be on it for reasons I can't say here on YouTube. Very true. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> on Jamie's Kitchen, Jamie Oliver uh, not only taught us how to cook, but also set up a not-for-profit restaurant run by disadvantaged youths. What was it called? Little I Chef. Don't know if it... What was that? <laughs> <laughs> it was not Little Chef. <laughs> that would have been a great name for the show. <laughs> I don't know if it was meant to be not-for-profit or it was just a bit shit. <laughs> but what was the restaurant called? <laughs> right, OK, next up. Which popular broadcaster and DJ du jour did Channel 4 choose to front First AIDS? It's 1987, evening of programmes to raise awareness of the AIDS crisis. Fine. Um, I'm going to play you a sound clip from a very helpful 1988 series called... What? The show was called First AIDS? Uh... Oh, oh, my God. OK, cool. <laughs> Easy Does It. Fine. Um, I'm going to play you a sound clip from a very helpful 1988 series called Easy Does It. I want you to guess what host Pat Rowlandson is telling viewers how to do. Move forward gently and remembering that we've got a bad hip, it does have to be gentle. All right. One foot in front of the other, not too close, and then bend slightly forward. Are you ready to push with your hands? Keep your head up. Um. How do you spell river dance? <laughs> <laughs> OK, how did you all get on in round six? Let's have a look. What was Charmian Watkins' area of expertise? Sewing needlework. Mm. Okay. Making clothes. Making clothes, and you've gone for... Makeovers. makeovers. OK, it was, in fact, fashion, specifically. What can I do for you? Well, the problem is the size. Yes. Now, the size that I take is a girl's size 12. Oh, my dear, yes. And, of course, at my age, yes. none of their clothes are suitable. Do you, do you find you, you know, excited about what you're wearing and you're happy with what you've made? Sometimes, but yes. not always, because yeah. of the patterns. Yes, I know, you have a difficulty there. You must talk to Betty about that, actually. I will. But I can help you on the fashion side of things. I've got an idea. If I show you the suit, for example... Excuse me, can I, can I move you just a sec? Thanks very much. It's basically the same tones. Oh, I want to look smart. I'm yes. sick of looking like front Oh, fashion. you don't have to, you see, and I don't think you do anyway, but you could look better than even now. <laughs> she could look better than even now. <laughs> Incredible to think. That is a backhanded compliment if I ever heard one. Yeah. You could look better now. Yeah, than even now. Yeah, even now. Even now, I could look better. I, I can't. <laughs> I blend in with my surroundings. I put <laughs> on background blue for my surroundings. <laughs> uh, fashion forward, Daniel Arias. Always.
I thought that was quite nice. That's lovely. Yeah, really there was none that. of that horrible Trini and Susanna tit grabbing, and you look like yeah. a bitch. <laughs> Than, than you do now, which I will accept you could look slightly nicer than you do now, but you do look lovely now. You know, that's a nice way to approach people rather than trying to tear them apart. <laughs> what? Uh, did, we, did anyone get that? No, no one got that. Oh, right, next one. Super Nanny Joe Frost asked why she would put me on the naughty step for 35 minutes. What did you get? A minute, a minute for, every, for year. every year. A minute per year. <laughs> David and Richard? One, one minute, minute for every year. year alive. Alive. What did you get? A step for every year. <laughs> no. Every year doesn't really cover it. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> I suppose you think that's all right. You get a point anyway. Is that what you you get the gist. <laughs> okay. We know it's not an escalator <laughs> you're standing no, I think on. <laughs> a step for every year. It's, it's getting very close. What do you think, audience? Should they get a point no. for that? No. <laughs> you, I will. I will let the scorers decide. Scorers. If you no. put a child... No, you don't get a point for that. Scorers. Yeah, for as year. if there's someone seriously out there. <laughs> touch my ear, I'm I know, we've scorer. conferred. No, there's no point for that. No point for step instead of minute. No, 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 no. <laughs> OK, next one. What is Jamie Oliver... All right, so... So I wouldn't be on there for 35 minutes. I'd be on there for 31 minutes. There you go. And you would be on there for 30... At least 50. At least 50. I would right. be punished for how I feel. <laughs> okay. Uh, what I am. Oh, man. God, we're like oil and water. How, how, do, how do we work together? I don't how? Know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I'm pretty sure I died in the 1950s. Like, <laughs> that's how I feel sometimes. Uh, All right. I got to be the rock star for the both of us. 100%, man. 100%. Mm -hmm. That's why I work hard and party harder. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yes. Others not for profit restaurant called. Your answers. It's a number answer. 15. Okay. You've gone for 15. Looks like is, but you've gone for 15. Okay. That's fine. 15. That's a correct answer. You've gone for 15. 15. 15. You've gone for Hucker Asbo dinners. <laughs> what? Starting with just Asbo dinners, and then Richard suggested we make it Pucker Asbo dinners. Also, Excellent. I wanted to change it into Din As with an A Z, <laughs> but we were worried about clarity at that yeah. stage. <laughs> Thanks for talking us through that, Richard. Well, you know, anything I can do to help. <laughs> Who presented for? Okay, okay. Fifteen. <laughs> uh, Fifteen. In one of the previous ones, I asked, "What's?" What's the uh, that restaurant that Gordon Ramsay opened up, like the Duck something? And yeah. apparently it's uh, like 300 pound a head. I'm like, uh, uh not doing that, not doing that. So I posed the same question to everybody at uh, watching here. Jamie Oliver's uh, 15 restaurant, is it open? Should I go there? If so, is it affordable? And what should I get? There you go. There you go. Mm-hmm. First aids. Mike Smith. You got Mike Smith? What do you go for, Carol and Frank? We went for Gary Davis, but with no idea really. He Gary was a very nice man. Okay, and Richard and David, you went for Mike Smith. Uh, well, let's have a look, shall we? Good evening. This is first aids. In the time it's taken me to say those words, someone somewhere in Britain might have performed an act which could threaten the life of any one of us. They'd have done it by showing the ultimate in human affection, making love. If you are going to have sex with somebody you don't know, if you are going to change partners a lot, then you should be protected. And you do that quite simply with one of these. This is a condom. Certainly, there's no doubt at all that condoms make sex safer, but they don't make it absolutely safe. And some people will never overcome the embarrassment that they cause. So we shouldn't only think about making sex safer, we should also think about having less sex. Now, for many of us, what? that could be tough. Especially if you're having none at all already. <laughs> <laughs> but have people been having less sex since then, you see? I think Mike Smith has. <laughs> <laughs> I think also the way he carries his condoms, I think, is a bit... Women don't like that when you just have them uh, resting on your knuckles uh, for the evening. Uh, <laughs> Do you find this embarrassing? <laughs> it doesn't. Ugh. 
Yeah, yeah. Nothing dries up a pussy quicker than uh, holding a condom like that. Yeah. Also, were, were condoms, like, condoms had to be around way before that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just, this is just that boom of AIDS. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, that's, that makes sense. We had that over the, here, too. Yeah, yeah, in the 80s. It was a big AIDS em- epidemic, and yeah. yeah, I gotcha, I gotcha. Prevent anything if you wear it like that. <laughs> Keeps your nails clean. <laughs> Hi, Frank. Oh, man. Well, what did you think Pat Rollinson was telling viewers how to do? OK, what have you got, uh, Frank and Carol? Well, we said I thought it was keep fit for the elderly. OK, uh, Alan and Jack, what did you go with? We didn't even stretch to exercise. We just put getting up. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't want to push them into any, like, you know, aerobics just yet. <laughs> Let's not run before we can get up. <laughs> Richard and David, can you take me through your answer, please? Um, we think she's telling old people how to jump off a building. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sadly, that is incorrect. Yeah. Let's have a look. Easy does it. If you have hip trouble, you may have difficulty in getting in and out of a chair, so you need a fairly tall chair. Ah. This is a very bad example. It's too low, but nevertheless, we'll try it. Now, to get out of that chair, get to the edge of it. So you move forward gently, and remembering that we've got a bad hip, it does have to be gentle. All right. One foot in front of the other, not too close, and then bend slightly forward. Are you ready to push with your hands? Keep your head up. And you're there. <laughs> Can we uh, show that to Vic Reeves? <laughs> <laughs> well, you were absolutely right with getting up. So she was describing getting up, which was the question. Pesa, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know, but you got there. <laughs> OK, let's have a quick look at this. Uh, I don't know. Just, like, things like that just crack me up. Uh, elderly... Uh, <laughs> PSAs, things like that. Those like always the, make me, fun, make me like, laugh. The ones that like make me die laughing are the life alerts. <laughs> yeah, I've fallen and I can't get up. Yeah, there's a little button around you because you suck at communicating with your relatives. <laughs> and you're like, so lonely that no one checks up on you. Like you have to push. Your like that's terrible. That's so <laughs> fucking terrible. Like it's so sad. <laughs> those, those infomercials like almost bring me to tears. Like no one gives a shit to check up on me. They will find me dead in my kitchen. Yeah, That's yeah. Fucking terrifying. No but one yes. checks up on grandma. No one checks up on grandma. So I got a little button connected to the fucking fire department. <laughs> Why do you think I'm still living at Nana's house? That's fucking so terrifying. Oh my god. <laughs> Help! I've fallen. And I can't get up. Call your son or your relatives. No one yeah. loves me. Fucking A. <laughs> Life alert. <laughs> Life alert, dude. <laughs> or like, a- like the little fucking, like, the, uh, what is it? The fucking stair chair. Like, yeah. The- <laughs> like, kill me. Kill me. Kill me. <laughs> Sell the house by a rambler. One level. Don't Don't subject yourself to that little stair chair. I, I can't. I, I'm never in a million years by that. <laughs> like, like, uh, like, I, yeah. <laughs> it's got me so fucked up. I can't remember what I was gonna say. There you go. Uh, oh my goodness. Go. There you go. The scores: Alan and Jack have 29. Tantalizingly, Frank and Carol have 27. And the also rans, as I like to think of them, Richard and David have 23. <laughs> It's time now for a bonus round on Channel 4 Quizzes, where I'll be asking questions about TV game shows on a quiz show. I have to be careful here, or we'll reverse time. Ah, <laughs> uh, who remembers the dark days before 1982, when students, OAPs and the housebound had to make up their own word and number games? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Countdown was, of course, the first show ever seen on Channel 4. 
and has become the gold standard of TV quizzes. It's the most talked about show in Channel 4 history, although a lot of that talk is people saying, what else is on? <laughs> <laughs> right, the questions. Mm. Here's so, um, I remember when we did that episode of the IT crowd where uh, Moss was on Countdown and yep. we made comparisons to Jeopardy. Uh, a lot of people just did not get what the hell that was. No. But, um, I... How do we how do we describe it? Like uh, they give the answers, you come up with the questions. It's for very uh, quizzical and very uh, scholarly people. Uh, it made Alex Trebek a household a name. Yeah, and yeah. now Ken Jennings, the new host. Um, and Is that the, the winning guy. That's the yeah. most winningest guy. Yeah, the most job? winningest winningest guy. Ken Jennings took over the job when Alex Trebek passed away after a bunch of celebrity hosts uh, did it. Yeah. But, but that's, that was, that is our equivalent of countdown. Yep. 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 Another of our beautifully enhanced photo clues. <laughs> what show is this? Is that you again? Yeah. Oh yeah. Haven't you got big shoulders? I have got big shoulders. Thanks. Yeah, yeah I'm very manly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, have you all got something? Okay. What have you gone for, Alan and Jack? Treasure Run. Okay, Carol and Frank? Treasure Run. Treasure Run. Richard and David? <laughs> Treasure Hunt with George Bush's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> we think that your face on that lady it does look a lot like, like George, George Bush's, Bush's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We just add it. Yeah, that was just, just an, it's an observation. <laughs> just for fun. Yeah. Okay, well, let's have a look and see who it was. Uh, I think I look better, but that is Annika Rice on Treasure Hunt. Well done, you all get a point. Okay, penultimate question of the evening. On a popular gambling themed yeah. show, what did one regular do to Bill Murray for 89 seconds, to Chris Tarrant for 222 seconds, and to Donna Eyre for a record breaking 290 seconds? I don't know. Oh, is it? Uh, what's his name? Okay, let's have a look and see what you put. Okay, you've gone for shaking hands. Okay, you've gone for shaking hands. You've gone for shaking Shake hands. hands. Yes, it was Mr. Shaky Hands Man from Banjo. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, on... that's a long time to shake hands, like two hundred yeah. and something seconds. Yeah, that's a long fucking time. Yeah, yeah. I only yeah. time I've ever heard of it being that long was when. Uh, Donald Trump went to France and shook uh, President Marcon's hand like for so long, like oh. it was like unbelievably long. Well, he was waiting for them to surrender. <laughs> of course, of course, you would say that. I'm just saying. Final question of the evening. Let's remind ourselves of the brilliant Crystal Maze. Oh, yeah. Drop the crystal into the water, and you've lost the game. Go on, Come on, get back up, girl. You're doing well. She was in the water more than she was out of the door. <laughs> okay, what I want to know, and it's pretty close between you two, and we'd love you to join in too. <laughs> what I want you to do is name the zones on the crystal maze. Oh. Right. You get a point for each zone, okay? That was um, Richard O'Brien, was it, on that right. crystal maze? Is that, that was right? Richard O'Brien, yeah? Who's since gone on to. Um, Designed the cells at Guantanamo Bay, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you've got your answers. Let's have a look. Let's go to Richard and David first. What have you got for the for the four zones? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Aztec, French, red light slash saucy, <laughs> Jeffers zone, which also doubles as a chill out room. <laughs> Well, one of them is right. Is it the Jeff Hurst zone chill out? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but Aztec is correct. You get a point for that. Well done. Ah, it's a <laughs> okay. Carol, what did you go with? We had Aztec zone. We had jungle zone, the ozone. <laughs> ah. Twilight zone, smoke free. 
the cortisone. And the chromosome. <laughs> Good science back there, chromosome. Alan Carr, Jack D, what did you go for? Aztec futurist, because I used to love um, Crystal Mad. Aztec futuristic industrial and Matalan. <laughs> Well, you could have had uh, industrial, <laughs> medieval, futuristic, Aztec, or ocean, which was added later. Oh. Means you got three points there. Oh. Wow! Wow! wow. <laughs> okay, well, let's have a look at the final scores. Richard Iwadi, David Mitchell have 26. Oh. Well done, then. <laughs> Frank Skinner and Carol Vorderman have 30 points. Well done to you. Oh. In second. But our winners this evening with 34 points, Jack D and Alan Carr. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what that means. You've got 34 points. That means you've got 34 seconds in the Crystal Dome. Bring out the dome. Okay, what is that? Well, it's what you've got to do is collect as many silver and gold pieces as you possibly can in the dome in the time of office. sound weird. Yeah, not just when you're in there, though, Alan. <laughs> right, start the fans. I'll do that collection as much can. gold as they can. Well, thanks to Alan and Jack, Frank and Carol, and Richard and David. The Big Fat Anniversary Quiz. We'll be back in 25 years. See you then. Good night. <laughs> OK, Alan and Jack, you've got um, about 40 gold pieces and 37 silver pieces. That means you owe me £12.50. <laughs> <laughs> what a victory. Uh... No trophy, no shit, just... That I need, I need another David Mitchell and Richard Iodi. I need that. I feel like they didn't get a chance to shine because they had no one to riff off of. Apparently, in later seasons, Richard Iodi and Noel Fielding are a, a dynamic duo. Oh yes, I believe hundred yeah. yeah. percent. So this is why we got to keep going with the big fat quiz. Man, that was great. Listen, mm -hmm. I'm here for the comedy. Like, oh, guys, yeah. love it to death. I and you guys know that I'm not plugged in at all so i will miss 90 percent of these references but i'm here for the comedy because their yeah. interactions are are top tier second to none hell yeah. anyway y'all uh thanks for watching patreon thank you for your patronage keeping lights on yep. youtube consider subscribing and watching another video and what else dan unplug and watch the, the no just unplug do something legendary exactly see y'all next time later Fellas, we could be that mistake. Let's do this.